Supremacy Games Chapter 351 to 375 Chapter 351 Not Lifting a Finger The moment the rest of the players saw that it was Felix they instantly sympathized with the horrified unlucky girl She pointed at herself with a shaky finger and said with watery eyes I just won yesterday and secured my room Please have mercy and pick another one Not buying it Felix sneered and walked towards her if you were a newbie, you wouldn't have dared to leave your room and hang out in front of the floor's entrance. He cracked his knuckles and said, Now, take me to your room to get this over with. The girl dropped her act at once and glared at Felix dangerously, You think I am scared of you? Yes. Felix nodded his head honestly. The girl sneered in disdain and walked in front of him with enticing steps, I just didn't want to dirty my hands two times in a single day. Felix didn't bother to respond to her as he followed behind her. The players sighed in relief after seeing that the challenge was accepted, well, not like she could reject it but they were worried that Felix might be affected by her crocodile tears and switch targets to one of them. Seeing the fight was set, they swiftly chased behind them as they were somewhat curious about how it would end up. Leader, do you think Manal has a chance against him? A gorgeous-looking man with a slender body and long brown hair that was touching the floor asked with an intrigued expression. I don't know. The woman sitting beside him replied lazily. She was wearing a long blue robe and had her hair made into a ponytail. What's unique about her was that her hair was changing colors constantly from blue to white. I am going to watch. The slender man offered his hand to the leader like a gentleman and said, Wanna accompany me? Beat it before I beat you. The leader merely threatened him while yawning in boredom. Fair enough. The slender man walked away immediately, not daring to disobey the order. He knew that he couldn't afford the consequences of doing so. Landlord, um, might as well watch the battle here. The leader yawned again while sending a request to Manal. She might be the leader of the club and floor, but she still didn't have the right to any private room in it. But, she was permitted without an issue. The moment the hologram was turned on, she saw that they had just reached the front door of Manal's room. However, none of them walked inside as both were having invisible holograms in front of them, showcasing the details of their opponent. At least, the exposed details from the games. Interesting. Felix took a glimpse at Manal and thought, didn't think that she is a dual fire and wind elementalist. Just like he was taking glimpses of her, she was also glancing at him with a tingle of dread and fear after seeing his peak ability that killed the Kraken. How much strength boost does that ability gives him to f asterisking one shot the Kraken? She gulped a mouthful sneakily, Mother didn't lie when she said that his bloodline is probably from a new rank above legendary. Naturally, every player who watched Felix's game and saw his abilities had their own guesses on their abnormality. The most logical one that had been going around between them was the Bloodline's rank being above Legendary. The unthinkable was finally starting to be considered when Felix kept using unique and busted abilities one after another. Heck, not only the players but even normal Bloodliners and commoners were starting to believe it. Questions like those were asked on many forums and platforms, was the debate on whether a higher rank above Legendary is finally over? How did Landlord get that kind of bloodline? How can I buy one for myself? The discussions kept revolving around those questions in the past couple of hours until people stopped calling it Landlord's bloodlines and just gave it an unofficial rank of their own, mythical bloodlines. In a sense, they were quite right in the naming since the primogenitors could be considered forgotten mythical beings in most parts of the universe but wrong at the same time since the primogenitors were as real as it could get. Just like that, Felix was turned into the first mythical bloodliner by the citizen without his knowledge. Mythical or not, I can still win against him if I kept my distance. Manal hardened her expression and asked with an unfriendly tone, You ready? Felix merely gestured with his hand for her to make a move first. Unworried about getting stuck in the back, Manal stepped inside her room, which had been modified to resemble an empty arena automatically after she accepted the challenge. 
Felix followed after her and they split midways, each heading in opposite directions. Unlike the battle against Monkey Lee where it started automatically after they entered the room, the rules here were quite different. First, the battle wouldn't begin unless both players had voiced their readiness to the Queen. Second, battles occur only on a natural arena so no one would be given an extra advantage above the other. Third, the battle ends immediately upon surrendering or death. Besides those three basic rules, everything else was allowed. Naturally, others couldn't interfere in the battle. Hence, they gathered around the arena and started making small bets on who would win. I am ready. I guess Serpent and Cat Guardian should be good enough to take care of her. Felix thought after hearing Manal voicing her readiness. Let's get this over with. Felix voiced his readiness to the Queen and immediately extended both of his palms sideways after giving him the start signal. Whoosh whoosh. Abruptly, transparent sand erupted from his left hand and green sand from his right hand. The moment Manal saw this sight, she knew what ability was using and she didn't dare to let him finish activating it. She dashed forward while having a tiny tornado revolving around her arm while the other one was engulfed in raging orange flames. She is starting the battle with her strongest technique, quite a smart decision. The leader commentated to herself while watching Manal finally reach the 20 meters mark, the best range for elemental rangers. Immediately after, she placed a foot in front of her while bending down a little. Her hands were brought together near her left waist. Everyone could see that the flames had been drawn out towards the tornado, turning into a fire tornado that was still revolving around her arm. Not wasting a single split second, Manal abruptly jerked her arm in front while having her palm facing the nonchalant Felix, who didn't seem scared even a bit by her ability. Let's see if you will maintain that attitude after tasting this. Manal narrowed her eyes in focus and shouted, expanding blazing tornado technique. Whoosh! Simultaneously to her shout, the flaming tornado on her arms was blasted towards Felix horizontally while growing bigger and bigger continuously. By the time the flaming tornado was about to reach Felix, its size was big enough that Felix appeared like a tiny ant before it. Yet. He still didn't seem worried about it, making everyone believe that he had something to rely on. They were absolutely correct as the green and transparent sand next to Felix had swiftly propelled themselves at Felix and created a spherical dome that was half green slash half transparent. Whoosh! Before anyone could react, the blazing tornado had engulfed the sphere and continued on its journey until it reached the wall behind Felix. However, the tornado was still raging on and on since it was attached to Manal's extended arm and she had yet to either deactivate it or stop feeding it flames. In other words, unless she runs out of energy this technique was everlasting. Naturally, abilities separately wouldn't have created such an enormous flaming tornado that shouldn't be accessible to second-stage bloodliners. However, when those two active abilities tornado beam, burning hand were combined with the common passive expanding wind, it created this astonishing technique, expanding blazing tornado. Did she get him? I really don't want to be in landlord's shoes right now. The challenge hasn't ended yet, he is probably still alive inside of it. The players were clamoring loudly in excitement at the sight of the blazing tornado still engulfing Felix without any signs of stopping. They believed that the sand barrier that covered him should be melted by now and made things even worse for Felix. However, since the challenge wasn't over yet, they weren't so sure about that take. Thankfully, their curiosity would be sated soon as Manal was starting to exhibit some signs of energy drain. Her technique was amazing all right but the energy to sustain it for more than 30 seconds was too much for her capacity. Hence, she swiftly deactivated the triple abilities while huffing in exhaustion. Regardless, a smug grin was affixed on her lips while looking at her technique breaking into orange and grey particles. How could this be? Alas! that smug smile didn't last for long as the sight that emerged after the disappearance of the tornado had made her heart almost leap out of her throat. It wasn't just her as everyone had stopped talking at once and started staring with widened eyes at a giant sphere that appeared like it got at least ten times bigger than before. They could see that it was red due to the sand being heated constantly, 
but that was it. It didn't melt as they expected nor did the sphere fall apart. Instead, it had gotten ten times bigger somehow. The answer to their questions was standing inside that red sphere still pumping sand from both of his palms. The only difference from before was the fact that those mounds of sand on the ground were finally starting to increase in height while shaping up as the Cat Guardian and the Serpent Guardian. Felix's absolute sand defense had stopped using the Guardian's sand to protect him. It was responsible for enlarging the sphere since each time it was about to collapse and harm Felix, the sand would propel itself and fix things up. But now that he was safe, the sphere broke apart into light particles on its own, exposing Felix within it while being accompanied by the newly risen guardians. Thud thud. Both of them did their usual greeting while facing Felix. Then, they switched their sight to Manal, looking at her with their soulless eyes. Shivers coursed on Manal's spine after trading eye contact with them, well... She wasn't able to see the cat guardian due to her transparent body but Manal could guess her look based on the other guardian. She didn't understand how Felix survived and what ability used, but those looks made her forget about everything and focus on her survival. Ladies, have fun beating her up. Felix placed his hands in his pockets and took a step back. He had no interest in joining the fight. In his eyes, two guardians were already an overkill against Manal who was already exhibiting signs of energy exhaustion. He wasn't lying in the slightest as the moment those two guardians were given the order, Manal was placed in a shitty position. Whoosh whoosh. The cat guardian couldn't be seen while the serpent guardian was swinging her long whip constantly at Manal, forcing her to continue evading non-stop. When she attempts to counterattack by firing off a smaller tornado from her arms, the serpent guardian easily sidestepped them and continued on her pressuring whipping, not allowing Manal even the time to breath. Smock smock. Manal kept trembling each time the whip landed on the white ground near her. The sound was loud enough she knew that those strikes were carrying a heavy punch. What do I do? Slice. Before Manal could rearrange her thoughts and figure a way out to win this hopeless fight, her brain short-circuited for a split second as she saw that her arm was flying right beside her face in a slow animation. Beside that arm, she noticed a transparent long nail that was tainted with few drops of her blood. How could she be so fast? Her heartbeats accelerated abruptly, pumping more adrenaline at the horrifying sight and making her feel nothing from her clean sliced shoulder. Slice. Alas. Just as she tried to reflexively jump backward away from that nail, she felt a sudden sense of weightlessness like she wasn't carrying anything. Then, came the feeling of flying, making her realize what had happened as she had experienced this sensation many times in the UVR. Sigh, is this the power of mythical bloodline? Ah, I want one badly. Thud. She didn't even manage to finish that last thought as her severed head had touched the ground and rolled two meters away from her body. Her eyes were still wide open, staring straight at Felix who was gazing at her with a satisfied smile, appearing like he was pleased by his guardian's performance. Splush! A fountain of blood had surged from her sliced neck, forcing her standing body to lose balance and fall on its back. Then, it broke into light particles with the head as well marking the end of the challenge. Felix smirked and snapped his fingers, sending the guardians away. Just like always, they kneeled before doing so, making the players feel envious by this sight. Who wouldn't want an ability that was strong enough that could f asterisk ck anyone without even lifting a finger? Chapter 352, The Artifacts Creation System, Entry Level The moment that happened, the queen sent Felix a message entailing that he had won the challenge and the room belonged to him from now on. AI pay the 100ksc monthly fees and kick everyone outside of my room. That was Felix's first order, as he had no intentions to converse with the dumbfounded players who were still having difficulty stomaching Manal's abrupt death. Whoosh whoosh. F asterisk ck. Way, why? Is your sand Colorado? I. Can pay for inform. The players started creating a ruckus immediately after seeing that their bodies were forced into a teleportation process. Alas, 
Felix acted deaf to their requests as he brought out the seeker shoes and started scrutinizing them. Sir Felix, your room is currently being viewed by Miss Frostbite. Felix had to stop his examination after hearing the room AI saying so. Frostbite. Could it the girl that Miss Lisa had given her MVP to? Had, what are the odds? Felix pondered about it while glancing at the sky. AI, block her access forever. Felix ordered nonchalantly and carried on his examination of the shoes. The AI did as she was told and Miss Frostbite had her hologram disconnected from spying on Felix. Instead of getting bothered, Miss Frostbite merely yawned while covering her icy grey lips with her hand. My family is definitely going to make me approach him for information if they knew that he is on my floor. Miss Frostbite sighed while standing up, so troublesome, couldn't he pick the midget's floor? Unlike the other club members who were dying to know about Felix's abilities and his bloodline's names, Miss Frostbite was completely disinterested in this matter. In her eyes, Felix wasn't going to befriend anyone or expose his secrets unless he was an idiot. So, she felt that it was just a waste of time to ask him about it or even interact with him. Her time was too precious to be wasted on chasing fantasies. Hence, she decided to ignore his existence and inform the rest of the club members to keep his existence a secret. This should buy me a week or so to slack off before my family finds out about it. She smiled faintly and snapped her finger creating a floating bed and a pillow. Then, she went to sleep right here and now, making the rowdy club members either chat telepathically or just split up and empty the floor. No one wanted to disturb her sleep as a hellish beating awaits them after. Just like the short leader on the 19th floor, she was also a peak 4th stage bloodliner who was probably in either high tier or peak tier platinum. In the training center mountain, the weakest club leaders were at peak 4th stage of replacement, since if the club leader loses a challenge, he would be forced to disband the club and give the entire floor ownership to the winner. So, to be a club leader, one must have absolute strength above the majority of bloodliners. Otherwise, challenges would be raining on them continuously and it wouldn't be long before their club gets disbanded. Naturally, those club leaders all had noteworthy backgrounds behind them, making them create clubs to bring in some of those experienced fighters within their ranks. After all, a normal bloodliner who reached peak second stage of replacement by simply integrating without fighting would never amount to players in the same integration level as him. This made gold players or above desirable by all backgrounds. Felix didn't know about any of this since the Ivy League city system was more brutal than what he was familiar with in the Androxa training center. With that being said, he still wouldn't care about it even if he knew. Felix was here to train first and foremost not to enter into club fights or such. Currently, he was trying on the seeker shoes after careful examination. Although they appeared like they were Nike shoes for running, that was just from the front. If someone looked at them from the back, they would notice two hexagon-shaped gems attached at the heels. Those gems appeared darkened like two ordinary stones that couldn't even reflect light. Queen Please connect with the Seeker Shoes chip. Felix requested while modifying his room to have as many different surfaces as possible. There were walls, trees, boulders, small lakes, etc. T.I. Ring. The Seeker Shoes have been connected with your bracelet. You can turn them on or off either by relying on me or by a simple touch on the bracelet. After the notification sound came the Queen's voice. Felix nodded his head in understanding and requested for the queen to turn them on immediately. T.I. Ring. The seeker shoes are live, flight 40% less weight anti-gravit yon hour later. Felix stopped his turn on and off practice and walked without major issues this time towards the wall. He placed one foot on it and smiled in satisfaction after feeling like gravity had stopped working on his foot after reaching it. Thud, F asterisk CK. Sadly, after he placed the other one, he had his head smashed into the ground since gravity was still working against the rest of his body. Idiot. Asna mocked him reflexively without even glancing above and seeing what he was doing. 
Her attention was fully engrossed in her chess game with the J, Ramungandra but she could still sense when Felix makes retarded mistakes like those. If I want my body not to be affected by gravity, I need speed. Felix shook his head while detaching his feet from the wall. He knew that wasn't happening soon unless he first mastered working properly without thinking about it. Whatever, let's try walking on water. Felix swiftly stood back up and walked towards a small-sized calm lake. He placed his foot on the water's surface gently and tried to submerge it deeply. However, no matter how much he forced, his foot refused to penetrate the water. After seeing so, Felix grinned slightly and stepped forward with the other foot. Just like that, he was truly standing on the water without any signs of him dropping down. Felix started walking and realized that it was difficult since the water surface made it resemble like he was walking on jelly. Let's test swamps now. Felix didn't stay for long on the water as he went to the next station. After seeing almost the same results as in water, he went to another station. He kept doing so until he tested all surfaces in the room. Then, he started jumping 10 meters in the air before gliding down and repeating the same process. Sometimes he mixed it up by deactivating the shoes mid-air, allowing his body to be pulled by gravity. When he repeats this sequence fast enough he realized that it was the same as having the ability to jump 10 meters without any drawbacks. This was the beauty of artifacts, the hidden potential each one had. Only the rightful user could take advantage of their full potential that even the dwarven who created them didn't know about those mechanics. It was like a video game, where the developers create complex characters while the players create jaw-dropping mechanics that wouldn't have come up in the developers' minds. Chapter 353, The Fang Club Hidden Difficulties A couple of hours later, Felix ended his training at midnight sharp. He left the training room and walked through the players on the floor, who rained on him with questions and friend requests by sending their UVR ID. Felix turned deaf to them and continued walking. Although his attitude pricked them, no one dared to attack him as they needed to voice their challenge first. If it wasn't for so, battles would have started in every place and ruined the atmosphere for everyone. Hence, battles were allowed only in rooms and after a proper challenge. Naturally, club leaders were exceptions to this rule as they could beat up their club members if they wanted to. As long as they were part of their club. T.I. Ring Just as the elevator opened up, Felix's eyes caught a floating bed inside of it. She's true that miss. Frostbite Felix was left speechless by the sight of the woman, sleeping peacefully with a faint smile of contentment. Whoosh Felix cleared the way as the bed started floating towards the floor without anyone's control. The rowdy floor immediately quietened up again like a spell was casted. This is why I will never join a club. Felix shook his head in disapproval at the sight and entered the elevator. Why would he willingly put his mercy at the hands of club leaders? Although he knew that clubs had many benefits, he would rather not have them if he would be forced to lower his head every time the leader walked by. The next morning, at 10 a.m., Felix had already left the Ivy League city. He was currently walking towards the Baleware Cafe at the corner of one of the thousands of intersections in the Androxa capital. Naturally, he wasn't wearing landlord's clothes or displaying the tags above his head. He used a randomly generated face as a disguise and walked inside the cafe. Immediately after, he easily spotted Emma since she was displaying her name above her head. She was wearing a formal blue marine suit, smart-looking glasses, and had her silky black hair made into a ponytail. She was sipping elegantly from a small cup while focusing on thin air. She seemed like a completely different person than she was cheering for Felix with a bandana on her forehead and paint done to her face. Felix never saw her cheering for him before, so he didn't react much to her current appearance. He just went forward and tapped the table with his index finger to attract her attention. Good morning. He greeted first with a faint smile. Mr. Landlord. Emma was stunned and somewhat excited for a second after seeing his entire face. However, her heart was cooled soon after remembering that he could easily pick any face he wanted and this was just another mask of his. Good morning. 
Emma hastily stood up and bowed her head slightly, it's an honor to meet you personally Mr. Landlord. Likewise. Felix nodded his head politely and took one of the empty seats next to her. Emma sat back down and snapped her finger creating two menus for them. I apologize for drinking first. I was here since 8 o'clock a.m. Don't mention it. Felix picked a normal cup of coffee on the menu and pressed order. He waved the menu away and asked in confusion, I believe that I said in my email 10 a.m.? I hope that there wasn't some mistake. Emma shook her head and said, I came here before schedule to work on some of the club's emails. She showed an invisible hologram to Felix, which was showing a packed email inbox. She sighed with a tingle of irritation in her voice, after your fourth game, I have been receiving hundreds of offers to sell the club management rights, unlike the last times. They are quite annoying as no matter how many rejections I sent or how many emails I block, they always find a way to send another offer. She looked at Felix's surprised expression and asked in confusion, Didn't you receive some of my emails? I have been notifying you about this situation for a while now. Cough. I apologize but I rarely check my inbox. Felix could only say so to hide his embarrassment. He ought to feel that way as he had completely forgotten that his fang club wasn't really belonging to him and could be sold to anyone if the management team decided to do so. Since Felix was neither paying them a salary nor even showing them some appreciation for their massive efforts, to bring in new members, raid forums and promote him, edit highlights and share them, etc., he wouldn't have realized that his club was sold until the deed was already done. Fang clubs were being sold daily to idle agencies for their own agendas. If idle agencies wanted to recruit a player but refused, they could totally buy his fang club and leverage it to force him into joining their ranks. After all, if he rejected again, the agencies would either destroy the club from within, making sure that most members jump to another player's club, or they could Loki start promoting one of their idols to those members. Whatever method they chose, the fang club could only disband later on since its main purpose was changed. Naturally, those loyal fans would create another club and start from the beginning yet again, but all of their previous efforts would have gone obsolete. After all, the website would be sold with the management rights and all the content inside. That would lead them to start from scratch, which demoralizes most of them and lower the profits obtained by the player supported. To avoid all of this, most players pay salaries and also make their fang clubs legit and authorized. In a sense, it truly belongs to them instead of being created by a ragtag group. When that happened, no one would be able to buy the club unless it was sold personally by the player. Felix always said that he needed to show appreciation to his fans but he kept forgetting about it due to his busy schedule that couldn't spare even a second. Thankfully for him, leader Emma was the sole creator of the club, making it impossible for the rest of the management team to sell the club if they were bought. How much were you offered lately? Felix asked in intrigue as he knew that the price wasn't going to be cheap in the slightest. That's because he believed that the ones wanting to buy his club weren't just idle agencies but also other backgrounds aiming to twist his arm with any method possible. Instead of telling him, leader Emma clicked on an email and displayed its content before Felix. Slash slash dear madam. Emma. It's us again, top idle agency. We don't know if you haven't received our email yesterday or not, but we are willing to extend a different offer this time. Sell us the ownership of Landlord's Fang Club for 399 million SC. The requirements to accept this deal. The ownership of the website and all the content within it. You will not create another Fang Club or work in one that has any correlation to Landlord. You cannot inform anyone about the deal. If you agree to those conditions, please respond as soon as possible. If you did not like any condition or the price, we could set up a meeting to discuss in detail. Yours sincerely. Top Idol Agency Slash Slash The moment Felix saw the sender's name, he doubted that it was truly an offer by them. He understood that a few agencies would be willing to pay that much just for a long shot at hiring him. By now, 
it should have been already established that Felix had no intentions of joining an agency after ignoring thousands of their emails. This meant, another background either used the agency to deliver their message or simply that background owned the agency hiddenly and used it to fulfill their agendas. With that being said, 399 million SC was still a hefty amount, and Felix felt quite surprised and somewhat honored that leader Emma actually rejected this offer. After all, he read her bio in the club management and knew that she wasn't rich by any means. Felix didn't hesitate to say to his curiously, May I know your reason for rejection? I believe that the rest of the management team had received offers like those and were probably pressuring you to accept. Correct. Leader Emma pushed the glasses up her nose bridge while removing the hologram separating her from Felix. She looked straight into his eyes and replied calmly, There is no reason. It was just a matter of principle. I made this club because I was fascinated by your bloodline and way of dealing with things. The majority of members who joined were the same as me. She showed him a sincere look and said, So, it's not my own club to sell it. It belonged to all of us, especially you. Before Felix could react, she smiled warmly while looking at him with a hint of zealousness that made him tremble in his spot, as for those disloyal dogs who were annoying me daily to sell it. Ha, they have already been gutted from the management team. Real fans are terrifying. A bit frightened by her ardor, Felix gulped a mouthful and asked, How many are left then? Leader Emma's cheeks reddened slightly as she answered, Only three. Me, Mercus, and our video editor, Mr. Thomas. Felix was left at a loss for words after hearing so. He knew that even his previous life club had more than 20 members in the management team. Yet, his current club had only three? How many did she kick? How the F asterisk CK were they not getting overwhelmed by work? The last time he checked, the Fang Club had F asterisking 74 million members and the number was still increasing rapidly. Although most of them were joining just for fun and wouldn't remain forever, Leader Emma was still going to have difficulty handling all of them by herself. All of this was actually his fault since if he had gotten a private agent earlier, he slash she would have taken care of his Fang Club legalization and hefty amounts of coins would tempt no one to betray him. Thankfully, it wasn't too late to make adjustments. I apologize for putting you in those situations. Felix's first thing was to voice a sincere apology since Leader Emma truly deserved one over his F asterisk CK up. This left Leader Emma somewhat stunned as she was used to Felix's indifference in the games. Before she could respond, Felix leaned closer to her and proposed with a faint smile, What do you think of being my private agent? Hey? Come again. Chapter 354, Making Emma His Private Agent Hey? Come again. Startled by his sudden offer, Emma exclaimed out loud, breaking her composed expression. Her exclamation reached the ears of the few parties sitting near them in total silence, drinking or reading on their AP hologram. She quickly bowed her head towards them as an apology and turned back, looking at Felix who still had an easy-going smile while staring at her. She knew that he was waiting for an answer. However, she didn't know what to say. The last thing she expected from this meeting was getting an offer to be hired for such an important role. When she received his email, she assumed that he would tell her that he was planning on owning the club and paying them salaries to keep doing their job or inform her that he had hired a private agent and she would be a subordinate of him. Emma understood this much because she was actually working in a new starter agency, which had most of its players still in bronze rank. This meant she wasn't foreign at all to the agencies and fan club world. In fact, the reason she joined an agency and created a club in the first place was due to her passion being always centered around the games and SG platform in general. She always wanted to join the SG as a player, but her affinity rating was too abysmal to help her make it far in her integration. Thus, she settled with the closest job that was related to the games. Obviously, it was an exclusive agent to a player. However, since her agency was actually small and lacking in players, she still wasn't assigned one. She was only doing odd jobs in the agency waiting for her chance. 
This gave her the free time she needed to create Felix's club and also manage it. Yet out of nowhere, she was offered her dream job from actually Felix. A player who had just hit the top 10 trending news in the Mariana Empire and even the top 100 in the entire galaxy. She knew that his email inbox was about to explode from all the offers he was receiving. Some of those offers were definitely from professional freelancer agents, wanting to be his exclusive agent. This was the reason she was confused and startled. He chose her instead of those individuals. Why me? She asked, knowingly that Felix didn't choose her out of pity or her beauty. Why not? Felix leaned back on his chair and said, I have read your profile that you posted on the club website. You already have experience in this field. It might not be as good as long-term veterans, but still, that is more than enough for me. Plus, I am a bit familiar with you than others, and so far, your personality and works ethics that you showed were in line with what I want from my private agent. Felix paused and added, Do notice that I am not giving you the job straight away but will place you on a six-month probation until you show me that you have what it takes to be my agent. Thank you for putting your trust in me. Emma could only say so while bowing her head in appreciation. Although it was just probation, she didn't hesitate to accept it as she knew that opportunities like those rarely show themselves. She was confident in skills and had the passion required to work without complaint since this was literally her dream job. Good. Pleased by her straightforwardness, Felix extended his hand forward, asking for a handshake to seal the recruitment. Emma delicately shook his hand. Now then. Felix withdrew his hand and pressed on his AP bracelet displaying a contract before Emma. Before we got into talking about the contract details, I assume that you understand your job requirement, correct? He asked. Yes. Emma nodded her head. Based on the training she received in the agency, a private agent dealt with his clients' emails, the business offers, social media accounts, brand if he had one, and most importantly managing his fan club. This meant nothing would change much for her besides getting access to the mentioned above. Of course, Felix would give her only landlord's email and not his real one. He also was going to make sure that only business emails were accessible to her. Good, do you want to read the contract now or should we reschedule another meeting to read it properly? He asked. Let's reschedule. She clarified. I can't sign it now anyway since I am still contracted exclusively with my agency. I need to terminate our contract first. I see. He rested his hand under his chin while asking, how much are the fees exactly? 5 million SC. She sighed. It was clear that she didn't have that kind of capital to break her contract. After all, she was just a salary woman in the UVR. 5 million SC might sound like a peanut to Felix, but in the eyes of Emma, it was an insurmountable mountain. Give me your bank ID. Felix looked at her and said, I will wire you the fees for now. B. No buts. He smiled, don't worry, you will pay me back in a jiffy if you became my agent. He enlarged the contract and highlighted her payment. The moment her eyes landed on the percentage she would be getting, her mouth couldn't help but part a little. However, she quickly closed it off while pushing her glasses upward, trying to regain her composure. She couldn't show any signs of incompetence in front of Felix. And acting surprised after seeing large sums of money was a bad sign. After all, she would be dealing with his business opportunities, which meant those kinds of numbers would be all over her face every day. Though, what Felix offered her was a bit too large for her expertise. He actually gave her a 0.2% of his streaming revenue, business opportunities, sponsors, social media ads, and such. It might not sound like a lot, but 0.2% from hundreds of millions to billions meant that Emma should be getting quite a large sum in every game and business opportunity that Felix accepted. Emma knew that Felix was beyond generous as only the best agents get paid with that amount. The rest barely get 0.1%. But this was Felix, he never acted cheap to those working with him. 
I guess there is no need to negotiate the payment. Felix said in a joking manner while withdrawing the contract. That was more than I ever wished for. She suddenly narrowed her eyes and said, I can't promise you that I will bring you the biggest profit, but I promise you that I will try my hardest to achieve so. That's the spirit that I wanted to see. Felix chuckled lightly and snapped his finger, manifesting a long blue piece of paper. It was revolving and shimmering with light. Since we have yet to sign the contract, let's leave business matters for later. Felix pointed at the piece of paper and informed, this is a 30% ticket discount coupon. I have three of those and I am planning to use one in my next game. So make sure that everyone knows about it to take advantage of the low prices. Emma's eyes brightened up in delight after seeing it. That's really great help. We can secure more tickets with those and have more dominance over the rest of the fan clubs and stadiums. Looking at her torch-like heated eyes, Felix wondered if he was talking to a different person from before. He coughed to bring the atmosphere normal again and said, Your first task after signing the contract is to give salaries to the management members of the club. He waved his hand while standing up, You take care of the salary and whom to get paid. I will not interfere. I will be on it right away. Come again, Emma fixed her glasses and stood up after him. She knew that the meeting had ended, and Felix was planning to leave. All right, I will see you soon. Felix pressed on his AP bracelet, paying for their coffee remotely, and left through the door. The moment he stepped outside, a notification resounded from his bracelet. He didn't even need to read it as he guessed that it was Emma sending him her bank account ID. She may not show it, but Emma was a proud principled woman. If she wasn't, she wouldn't have rejected those agencies' offers to buy the club from her. For Emma who didn't even have one million in her bank account to reject such a freebie, said a lot about her character. If she kept being this principled, she would definitely reach new heights in her career next to Felix. Eight hours later, Felix had just finished his daily poison manipulation training, his tail training, his sand abilities training, and also some hand-in-hand -hand combat. Lastly, he threw in an hour to continue getting familiar with the seeker shoes. By the time he finished, his body wasn't feeling anything but his mind was exhausted. Yet, he wasn't done since another training was waiting for him. That was elemental football practice with the team. It had been a long long time since Felix had trained with them. To be exact, Felix never stepped foot in George's UVR room for over two months now. That's right. In the past three months, Felix had only trained with the team in the first month before getting kicked out of it by George. Who could blame George for doing so? In every goddamn practice match they played, Felix always kills the goalkeepers and other few teammates standing in the wrong place and the wrong time. Although they played in the UVR and George even lowered the pain percentage, those who got killed were left with horrifying nightmares, making it impossible for them to sleep. Imagine getting your head blown up by a ball to wake and repeat the same process. The body might be fooled but the mind could never erase that image. That image kept getting worse and worse until no one dared to stand before Felix in the practice matches. Even the goalkeepers kept giving Felix free goals to avoid getting killed. When this kept happening, George didn't dare to leave this daredevil to ruin the team before the real match. He already broke them in a single month and he couldn't imagine what would happen if he kept him for three months more. Hence, the innocent Felix who was trying to have fun was banned from training with the team. Honestly, who are we kidding? Felix totally meant to traumatize his teammates like that so he could avoid training with the team. It was useless and just wasting his precious time. Currently, he wasn't returning because he wanted to train but to check on Olivia and the rest. He needed to know if they watched his fourth game and what their thoughts were. The easiest target was obviously Olivia who had her emotions written all over her face. Chapter 355, Getting Suspected If he noticed anything weird, Felix had plans to further remove any suspension by showing them two more poisonous abilities from the toxic Bale Lion bloodline. Those abilities were legit from that bloodline. 
Felix had spent a lot of time training and using them until he could cast them instantaneously just like he had unlocked them. After Felix reached his Androxa house, he went for a quick shower. During it, he dialed George's number. Ring ring, cluck. What's up? George responded calmly. When is today's practice? Felix straight away asked, is it still at 19,00? Why are you asking? George got a bit defensive, are you planning to come? Yes, I want to check on the team's improvement. Felix lied through his teeth. Um, as long as you don't kill anyone, I don't mind having you there. George asked, what's your integration level by the way? Did you reach greater purity yet? I am currently at 65% dot. Felix continued to lie without a change of expression. That's good. George asked in excitement, what did you unlock? Before Felix could respond, George cut him off and said, don't tell me, group up with the team half an hour later in my UVR room. It's better to see them in action. Felix shrugged his shoulders and agreed. Then, he hung up and carried on showering. 45 minutes later. Inside George's UVR room which was still just a humongous football field inside a glass dome, Felix's body had reconstructed on the L.U.S. True's green grass right outside of the dome. Pass the ball. Block it with your sand wall. I am open. The moment Felix opened his eyes, he was greeted with the sight of an ongoing 12 vs 12 match. He raised his head and looked at the score that was displayed on the glass ceiling. Team Roland Dinho Team Noah Woosh. The ball kept sizzling and emitting lightning charges, making anyone believe that using hands to catch it was an impossibility since the lightning would cause a paralyzing effect after a slight touch. Ronaldinho was chosen as one of the team's main strikers due to his football skills and this kicking technique. Yet, no one in Noah's team seemed worried about it as they smirked while watching Noah point his icy blue horn at the sizzling ball and blink his eyes once. SHSHSHSHS. Simultaneous to his blink, the icy blue horn was lightened up akin to a beacon, and then an abrupt blue beam was projected at the ball with a frightening accuracy. SHSSHHS. Immediately after contact, the sizzling ball kept on going while inside the blue beam but its speed was getting slower and slower while the lighting effect had fully disappeared. All of this due to the blue beam being actually a chilling mist that was concentrated extensively. Thus, the ball stood no chance against the chilling effect that slowed its speed down and also froze it in the process. Although it became a frozen ball, it still had the initial momentum to continue flying like a piece of rock. Yet, Noah didn't even bother using his hands to catch it as a simple indifferent glance and the ball stopped moving at once after reaching a meter in front of his face. This wasn't due to an ability but simply using mental energy to control the ice that was encasing the ball. Thud. Noah let go of his control and also deactivated his second active ability Chilling Ray. The ball dropped into the grass in front of him while the ice around it broke into blue particles and drifted in the air. God damn it. How can we ever score against that? Roland Dinho kicked off the grass in vexation while walking back to his disappointed teammates. Meanwhile, Noah's team was giving him thumbs up like they always do after his successful blocks. For the score to be 0-9, to nine, it only meant that Noah was doing a terrific job at being a goalkeeper. Truly an interesting ability. Felix murmured, Can it stop my supersonic kick though? This f asterisking devil. Shivers coursed at George's back after hearing Felix's murmur. He heard what he said and he didn't feel even slightly curious about the result of that confrontation. He would rather keep the morale high like this than allow this devil to ruin it like he ruins everything else. Peep peep. Abruptly, George used the whistler to attract everyone's attention and then shouted, Match is over. Gather in the center. Everyone got confused by the sudden interruption but still listened to the orders and walked towards the field's center. Those who were outside the dome were all teleported by George there. The moment Felix's body was reconstructed within the pack, most of them took a step back while staring at him with a weary expression. Hina even yelped in fright and hid behind Olivia like a scared kitten. 
Memories of the first month flooded their brains, making them relieve those hellish moments under his hands. Felix saw that only a couple of his teammates were actually excited to see him. Surprisingly, he noticed that Olivia didn't seem that jumpy after seeing him like always. Instead, she was narrowing her eyes at him while from time to time glancing at his tail. Felix didn't focus too much on her as he switched his vision towards the rest of his national teammates and noticed that most of them were acting weird while looking at him, besides the expressionless Noah and Kenny who was looking at him with his usual polite smile. Um, it seems like they have watched the game and found out the similarities. Felix thought. Chapter 356, Little Detective Olivia All right. I gathered you here to tell you that the captain is going to join the practice today. George said while placing his hand on Felix's shoulder. Welcome back captain. Leo Bridge asked excitedly, are you going to show us some of your supersonic kicks today? I don. No, he won't. George swiftly interrupted Felix and said sternly, he will be joining the training but not the practice matches. Besides Leo and other few members, Everyone else sighed in relief after hearing so. Captain, before we start, please show the three new abilities that you possess. George requested. All right. Felix didn't reject since he was done a favor by George. He wanted to display his poison abilities to Olivia and the rest of his cousins but he didn't want to make it obvious. Without needing to ask, everyone gave him space by stepping back a couple of meters. After seeing so, Felix pointed his palm at the ground next to him and said, This is my first active ability of the toxic bale lion, my asthma swamp. Whoosh! Olivia and the rest of his cousins had their hearts shaken at the sight of a stream of poisonous mist gush from Felix's palm and land on the ground in a circular shape. The poison was light green and kept emitting a repugnant stench that forced everyone to close their noses in revulsion. Felix shrugged his shoulders at the sight and said, it's not that good of an ability since it needed someone to step inside for it to take full effect. Indeed. George sighed in disappointment and said, the smell would make it obvious. But its effects are quite good. Felix smiled warmly and asked, anyone want to volunteer to test it out? Seeing that everyone was avoiding having eye contact with him, Felix clicked his tongue in criticism and deactivated his ability. Naturally, it looked that way to everyone but he was merely stopping his poison manipulation. All right, now to my second new active ability that sadly replaced my poison pillars. Felix sighed in dejection after saying so. So fake. Asna scoffed. Is it worse than poison pillars? Leo asked what was on everyone's mind. They are like day and night. Felix nodded his head and said, it's one of the beast's iconic abilities. Instead of telling them more, Felix shaped up his hand into a claw and brought it down. The moment he did so, a green poisonous claw had manifested in front of him and repeated the same animation. This time Felix went all out in his bullshit as he slashed left and right ceaselessly, making everyone get engrossed in the claw's manifestations. While he was doing so, Felix was taking glimpses at Olivia's expression and his cousin's. Seeing that they were either smiling wryly or shaking their heads, he knew that he removed any suspension that he had on him. Although it was just an assumption, Felix was quite confident in it. He knew that it was more believable that it was a coincidence for him to have the same tail as Landlord than being capable of using more than ten abilities at once. Don't even mention those abilities were from different elements and one element that Felix didn't even possess in their eyes. They only knew that he had poison and illusion element. Hehe, <laughs> all of my previous efforts weren't gone to waste. Felix chuckled in his mind while stopping his demonstration. I believe those are toxic claws, correct? George said. Yes. It's quite a popular ability. George rubbed his chin, I believe that anyone touched by it would have his skin corroded and numbed. Felix nodded his head in agreement and said lastly, as for my second passive, I have unlocked poison resistance again. That's good. George blurted, it was a risky move to edge poison bombs over poison resistance, but thankfully, you unlocked it again. Naturally, 
Everyone thought Felix was crazy at the start when he told them that he edged poison bombs instead of poison resistance. After all, there was no guarantee that he would unlock poison resistance in his first stage of replacement or 2nd etc. Hence, it was a must to edge resistance first then focus on abilities later, lest one ends up getting harmed by his own element. But, Felix didn't care about anything they said since he was already immune to poison. It was easier to just bullshit them like this by saying that he unlocked it again. Afterward, everyone split up and went to their own training stations with their coaches. As George said, there wouldn't be any more matches when Felix was around. Currently, Felix was next to George, getting updated about the final version of the main team rooster and also the tactic used. Oh? You are considering 5-4-3 tactic? Felix wondered. Is my position still the same? We changed it. George created a hologram that was showing a minimized green field and pointed his finger at the center. We decided that it's best if you were a center midfield instead of a striker, so you will be able to defend as well as attack. Plus, you will have more chances to get possession of the ball like this. True. Felix agreed with that notion as he also felt that being a striker wasn't that good. He might have easier chances of scoring due to the close distance he would have with the goalpost, but that only if the ball managed to reach him. He preferred getting the ball on his own instead of depending on the team to do it for him. So, he was in favor of this change. What about the rest? He asked, any noteworthy changes? George placed multiple names on the minimized field and left Felix to look on his own. In a few moments, Felix's curiosity died down after noticing that only a few teammates had their positions swapped. Like Zhang Wei, who was placed at the start as the main defender was now pushed into the midfield as well. Meanwhile, Johnson who was placed as a midfielder before had been turned into a striker. This decision made Felix slightly confused since he knew that Johnson's skills were as trashy as his. The only difference was that Felix's kick didn't matter which angle it was shouted at since it could penetrate anything. But for Johnson? Felix doubted that he would score a goal with his strength and fog elemental abilities. However, he didn't ask about it since there was still a month until the game starts. This version was bound to change once or twice. So, he went towards the kicking station after saying a couple of words. He planned on training a bit seriously this month since he wasn't focusing too much on the football game due to time constraints. While he was training on his aim against a minimized version of the goalpost, Olivia and Hina were peeking at him from behind a large basket filled with balls. What are you doing Oli? Hina whispered. Trusting a hunch of mine. Olivia replied vaguely while creating two invisible holograms and linking them together. One hologram had Felix's picture and the other had Landlord's picture. Madam Queen, please compare their height, and tail's length. Olivia requested while narrowing her eyes at Felix. The results came out a split second later. They have the same height of 183 centimeters and their tail has the same length of being 197 centimeters. Olivia felt her heart skip a beat at the result. She looked at Felix who was kicking a ball after another and thought, their height is the same, their tail length is the same, their behavior and manner of speech are also the same, even the body shape is the same. Could Felix be landlord for real? However, soon she scratched her head in confusion after remembering that he just showed them two abilities from Toxic Bale Lion while landlord had displayed five unique different abilities. Not mentioning the other tens of differences between them made it illogical to even consider them being the same. Arg. Is it him or not? This is so confusing. Olivia cried in her mind while dragging her head behind the basket. What's wrong with you? Hina was left baffled by Olivia's behavior. I sigh, it's nothing. Olivia wanted for a second to divulge what she found about Felix and see what her bestie had to say but she stopped herself after remembering what she read online about Landlord's situation. It wasn't a secret that Felix was being searched and looked after by everyone and Olivia wasn't a fool to share her hunch with others. She knew that might end up badly for Felix and she didn't want to put him in danger over a hunch. Heck, 
even if she found out about the truth, she had no intentions of sharing the information with others. Instead, she would do her best to defend against Felix just like she did against Adam's accusations. The only reason she was even looking deeply into this was that her hunch was eating her up. Alas, the difference in abilities and bloodline used was like a great wall of logic that blocked all of her attempts into believing in her hunch. Hence, she decided to give up on it for now and continue to follow the news and games of Felix, waiting for the day where that wall of logic crumbled by a single mistake. Let's just leave. Hina mentioned, Sophia is calling for us. Okay. Olivia nodded her head and stood up from behind the basket with Hina. However, the moment the girls did so, they were met with Felix standing right in front of the basket with a gentle smile that appeared like a devilish grin. What are you doing here little detectives? Kai a a a a a Ruhun. Felix didn't even manage to finish off his question as both of them had let out terrified shrieks and bolted away towards Sophia. While Hina was scared shitless by the mere sight of Felix, Olivia was scared of being found out that she investigating him. At loss for words, Felix could only look at them run away with their tiny legs, appearing quite comical. Soon, he shrugged his shoulders carelessly and went back to his kicking practice. Chapter 357 the Maganda Tribe. Days passed by quickly and the galactical yearly auction event was just around the corner. Felix spent those days either practicing or conversing with his private agent Emma. She had already signed the contract and got to work on his landlord's business emails that he kept ignoring. Naturally, before contacting anyone, she had to ask first whether Felix was interested in the offer or not. 99% of them were rejected since they were invitations to interviews and ads that either required him to show his face or the payment wasn't even worth two hours of Felix's time. As for the remaining 1%, it revolved around sponsorship deals. Felix permitted Emma to accept only brands that were willing to pay 450 million SC and for each game he had their brand logo on his clothes. Naturally, not everyone agreed to such a preposterous offer when Emma related to them. After all, 450 million SC for just a logo appearance? That was too much of a rip-off. Yet, three brands actually agreed upon the price on the condition that Felix remain contracted to them for three games at a minimum. Plus, he needed to give the brands some shout-outs once in a while. It might seem like it wasn't worth it of an advertise.e.m.e.nt since Felix's games rarely had above 100 million live viewers, but that was only if we considered live viewers. The brands weren't paying to be seen live but actually noticed when Felix's highlights get posted on the VR videos platform. After all, there were millions of games that were being played daily, no one could invest in watching all of them. This made the viewership of each gold game always be on the border of 100 million to 200 million. However, in the VR videos platform, the highlights of those games receive billions in mere seconds and if a highlight went viral it could reach up to hundreds of billions of viewers in just a minute. That's what those brands were investing their money on. They hoped that in Felix's upcoming games, he does some crazy shit like slaying the kraken and surfing on lava. Hence. His videos explode in popularity, which helps their brands get noticed by as many viewers as possible. Felix didn't care about their wishes and hopes as he was planning to play the games like he sees fit. But, he still accepted the business deals since he needed coins badly for the auction. If it wasn't for his desperation, he would have listened to Emma's suggestion of creating his own clothing landlord brand and wear it in the next games. He knew that it needed months and months of effort to get his landlord's clothing brand ongoing. He needed coins in merely 15 days. With that being said, Felix still told Emma to take care of his future brand and that he was going to wire her capital to start later on. He didn't want to give her now since that would defy the purpose of gathering coins for the event. From those three brands, Felix had earned 1,350,000,000 SC extra adding to his 15 billion SC capital. Obviously, it was increased by 2 billion SC or so due to his investment projects coming along but mostly due to the fourth game's recordings getting sold. Yet, 
Felix still felt that his capital wasn't enough to get the best out of this event. Thankfully, he still had the ancient ruins maps that were ready to be placed in the event. Four hours before the event, in the Androxa house. Felix was sitting in the living room with a leg above the other. It was currently 8 a.m. and Felix woke up this early to write an email and send it to the Maganda chief. Naturally, he still hadn't accepted the invitation right away so it wouldn't appear like he was thirsty to get inside. Felix wasn't worried that the chief would suddenly change his mind since Princess Bird wrote that her father would wait for a response until the last hour before the event started. Let's keep it short and simple. Felix murmured while typing a single sentence expressing his gratitude for the invitation and honor to meet with him. After all, the Maganda chief was a legendary peak sixth stage bloodliner who was only one step away from getting into the ranks of the strongest bloodliners in the galaxy. Not mentioning his influence and tribe's strength as a whole made it one of the top four entities in the Mariana Empire territory. Even though Felix knew that the chief was aiming for him, Felix still had to show the proper respect. After editing the email, he sent it and closed his inbox. Now, he could only head for a shower and prepare himself as there were only four hours or so before the official opening. While Felix enjoyed his morning shower, Princess Bird was lying on a bed that appeared like it was made from pink leaves. The entire room actually resembled a normal teenager room but everything had relations to trees and plants, making it appear somewhat fresh and unique. I have been refreshing for over an hour now. Princess Bird mumbled while biting her nails, is he really not going to accept the invitation? Let's check again. After she waited for a couple of seconds, Princess Bird pressed refresh again on her inbox. This time, she noticed that a new email had emerged and she got instantly excited about it since she could see that it was highlighted with red. She swiftly opened it up and read the content with her eyes. Hehe. <laughs> Of course it's an honor for you to meet my father, um? That's it. Princess Bird was startled when she realized that was the last thing ever written in the email. She expected that she would get mentioned at least once since Felix had spoken with her during the shuffle maze. Alas, she reread the email twice and it was still just a single sentence. I guess he forgot about me. Annoyed, Princess Bird wore her slippers while closing the hologram. Then. She went to her bedroom door that was just a giant square-shaped pink petal. Immediately after standing in front of it, the petal automatically rolled on itself, allowing Princess Bird to exit her room. Good morning Princess Alicia. A pretty short servant greeted with her hands folded together and head lowered. Morning sissy. Princess Bird asked, do you know my father's current location? I believe he is at the Royal Bloodline Library. The servant answered. Tisk, does he ever leave it? Princess Bird clicked her tongue in criticism and stood on two gorgeous-looking white lotus flowers. Then she snapped her finger and the flowers hovered one meter above the branch she was standing on. After all, her room wasn't in a normal modern building but in a humongous tree that had its branches and leaves touch the clouds. This tree was actually the main royal palace of the Maganda tribe on this planet. It was the only one with this uncanny size as the rest of its brethren and sisters did not even reach 20% of its height. Naturally, all of those trees were inhabited by the tribe's citizen. It might appear like they were uncivilized to live in trees instead of buildings but this was actually done by choice to keep the heritage and culture of the tribe. Still, they weren't resistant to the idea of technology as they had included what they could without affecting their lifestyle or changing the appearance of their culture. For example, there were no hovercars in the tribe but the citizens used hover plants and mounts to move around. All of this was in actual real life. Currently, Princess Bird was riding on those two hover lotuses while heading towards the central elevator in the tree that was specifically used just for the royalty. In her way, she was being greeted constantly by servants, guards, and some distant family members. As the youngest daughter and one of the three heirs to the tribe, she was ought to be treated this respectfully by anyone residing in the royal tree. After a while, she reached the elevator which was just a wooden platform that was connected by long green vines. Princess Bird stepped inside and scratched a vine next to her like she was greeting a pet. 
It wasn't far-fetched to consider it so as the vine actually moved based on her gentle touch, appearing like it liked being caressed this way. Viney, please take me to the royal library. Princess Bird requested gently. Whoosh! The vines responded to her request by rolling one vine against her waist and then lifting off the elevator, faster than normal technological ones. Princess Bird didn't seem bothered by her hair flailing everywhere, exposing her hexagon-shaped blue eyes. She kept looking downward at the citizen of the tribe, appearing like tiny ants. If it weren't for her mutation that gave her eagle eyes, she wouldn't even notice them. In a minute or two, the elevator finally stopped and the vine unrolled itself from Princess Bird. She swiftly carried on hovering on a long empty path with paintings of people wearing tribal outfits and cold weapons, ranging from spears to shields. Under those paintings, there were sentences written in an unfamiliar language. It seemed to be the Maganda language. Princess Bird didn't bother to glance at those paintings as she had been seeing them ever since she was a child. All of that due to her father rarely leaving the Bloodline Library, forcing her to hang out with him there to play. Soon, she reached a giant gate that was closed shut. It wasn't a gate per se since it was just hundreds of black vines intertwining with each other, making it impossible even to take a glimpse inside. Princess Bird stood in front of them and shouted, Dad! Open up! A similar irritated shout replied to her, I am busy. Go away! No! Princess Bird kept yelling, Landlord has responded. Couldn't you just send a message? We are are not barbarians you know. The chief yelled from behind the gate. Princess Bird smirked evilly and shouted, Landlord has cursed you in the email. I wanted you to see IT. After she said so, the area went quiet for a second before the sound of footsteps resounded from behind the gate. SHSHSHSHS. The moment the footsteps got near the gate, the vines started relaxing on each other and slithering back into the tree, hiding out of sight. This exposed the chief who was approaching Princess Bird while wearing a nitrobe and glasses. He looked quite solemn and also annoyed at having his reading session getting interrupted. However, he still went next to Princess Bird and asked strictly, what did he say? Instead of responding, Princess Bird showed him the email while tiptoeing slowly around him. The moment she saw that he started reading it, she swiftly bolted inside the library while letting out a mischievous laugh. Chapter 358, Preparing for the Auction Event You little. Vexed, the chief could only wave the hologram away from his face while walking slowly inside the Bloodline Library. One look at it and anyone would understand why the chief was being referred to as the Bloodline Collector. The library wasn't packed with books only but millions of Bloodline bottles from all different shapes, colors that were filled with unique liquids. All of those bottles were separated from Tier 1 Common Bloodlines to Tier 7 Legendary Bloodlines. They were placed on shelves with a small description written underneath them. No wonder the chief didn't want Princess Bird to enter, those bottles weren't protected but placed right there in the open and could be taken any time. How many times did I tell you not to touch anything? The chief immediately scolded after seeing Princess Bird opening up a blue-colored bottle from his work desk and smelling it up. Is this a new bloodline? Princess Bird inquired while placing the bottle back. Yes. The chief revealed with a tinge of pride in his tone, this bloodline belongs to the legendary Tier 6 Monster Eater Beast. Ah! Uh -huh. Princess Bird exclaimed in astonishment, making the chief feel quite happy by it. Although he knew that his daughter knew nothing about the beast or how difficult it was to secure this bottle, he still enjoyed the reaction. Ha! <laughs> works every time. Princess Bird smirked faintly after seeing that her father didn't plan on kicking her out anymore. By the way, did you send Landlord the invitation link for the auction venue? The chief asked casually while sitting back on his desk. Cough, of course. I am not stupid to forget. Princess Bird answered with a shifty look. Sigh, be quick and send it, he must be waiting. The chief didn't even need to lift his head and look at her to know that she was lying. Abashed, Princess Bird hastily entered her inbox and sent Felix an email with the invitation link. 
After all, the auction wasn't planned to be hosted inside the capital city or any city in that sense. It was actually going to be held in a private UVR venue created specifically for this event and would disappear after. Every galactical event that would experience millions of guests was always held up in this manner so they wouldn't affect the daily lives of those living in cities. Naturally, the chief had only two invitation links. One for him and the other for Felix. Those links could be used only by one person. However, there was a way to invite more than plus one to the event. Princess Bird was going to attend the event as well by using it. Go get yourself ready. The chief shooed her away after seeing that she was doing nothing but stare at him writing the details of the blue bottle. Why do I need to get ready when I will be there as a ghost? She retorted. Are you planning to look bad in front of your crush? The chief said, grinning. Bang! Dad! Princess Bird pounded the table with her fist in anger and threatened, You better not bring this bullshit when we meet him. Hat! You mean how you spent hundreds of millions to locate him and how you watched every game of his and followed all the news about him? The chief kept antagonizing her with a silly grin, you mean that bullshit? Arg! Leave me alone! Princess Bird growled at him. I am just saying. The chief shrugged his shoulders, we might be aiming for him but we are not going to harm him. So, if you liked him, I can work something out to help you. You old fart. I am telling mom that you are bullying me. In the end, Princess Bird couldn't handle the embarrassment and just escaped through the library gate. He he he, finally some peace. The chief grinned widely, using that lad is truly a good way to get rid of her. Without further ado, the chief engrossed himself back in writing the details of the legendary beast in enjoyment. Meanwhile, Felix had just finished his shower and checked his inbox for a replay. After seeing the invitation link, he smiled in satisfaction. Queen, please use the invitation link. Felix requested while heading to the kitchen for breakfast. Currently, he was using the VR pod, and he wasn't planning on exiting the UVR for the entire duration of the auction event. Sir Felix the event has yet to commence but you have the requirement to receive the auction catalog. The queen replied. That's what I wanted. Felix requested while filling up the table with food, please open it up. A side hologram had manifested before Felix at his request. It wasn't showcasing the item's names or prices. Instead, it was just a long list of auction house names while written next to them the type of the auctioned items. For example, there was an auction house that was centered around auctioning only unexplored habitable planets, unexplored deserted planets that seemed to have chances of finding energy mines. Meanwhile, there was another auction house that was targeting only clients who wanted to bid for wormhole coordinations that leads to one of the billions of unnamed galaxies out there. Those coordinations were extremely expensive since having the first rights to explore a new galaxy would amount to an infinite amount of resources, ranging from mines, ancient ruins, newly found races etc. Usually, multiple backgrounds combine their capitals to win the bid. Felix knew that the seller of those coordinations would earn at least hundreds of billions SC and sometimes, the bid could even reach a trillion. If Felix had the coordinations of any of those wormholes, he would have already sold it and instantly turned into a filthy rich man. Alas, the only memory he had was ending up using a star suicide wormhole left behind by a bastard space worm. Usually, many random wormholes around the universe were either leading to an already explored galaxy or burning stars. This made it too risky to hunt for paths leading to new galaxies with those f nig space worms committing star suicide everywhere. If those random wormholes found around weren't unstable, no one would be afraid of ending up meeting with a star since they could send a small empty spaceship to scout ahead. Alas, they get shredded by the space-time force inside the wormhole. The explorers couldn't afford to buy multiple tough spaceships.i.p.s to send them to their doom after meeting a star. Hence, the search for new galaxies coordinations was the same as searching for a new continent in the age of discovery. One should be willing to face the tempestuous sea to get the riches. 
Felix wasn't planning on attending those types of auctions as he wouldn't really bring their utmost benefits on his own. Instead, he kept scrolling down the list until he found an auction for just energy stones and mines. He swiftly pressed on it and was met with the list of items placed and their starting bids. Slash slash. Common grade elemental stones. Greater than 100,000 high grade fire elemental stones bundle slash starting price, 100 million SC. Greater than 10,000 peak grade lightning elemental stones bundle slash starting price, 200 million SC. Uncommon grade elemental stones. Greater than 100,000 high grade dark elemental stones bundle slash starting price, 350 million SC. Greater than 10,000 peak grade sand elemental stones bundle slash starting price, 450 million SC. Rare grade elemental stones. Greater than 10,000 high grade gravity elemental stones bundle slash starting price, 650 million SC. Greater than 10,000 high grade illusion elemental stones bundle slash starting price, 650 million SC. Greater than 1,000 peak grade illusion elemental stones bundle slash starting price, 740 million SC slash slash. Felix couldn't help but drew a deep breath after seeing the starting price of the illusion stones. He always knew that they were expensive as hell but he didn't think that even in this yearly auction event the price wouldn't get any cheaper. He understood that the 10,000 stone bundle could potentially reach up to 4 billion SC if he met with a desperate soul contesting against him. Yet, he was still planning on getting them since there wasn't going to be another opportunity to push himself to a 100% illusion affinity rating. Although he might not be able to use it, he had enough coins now to afford to buy them on the site unlike before. Sigh, it's costly as hell to work with a rare element. Felix lamented while closing down the hologram. Hopefully, there might be some illusion bloodlines in the auctions to purchase. Felix wasn't really planning to enter the second stage of replacement with Illusion Primogenitor Bloodline since he knew that it would take ages to gather the necessary amount to reach 99%. However, with the capital he had, he could totally afford to buy whatever Illusion Bloodline he found and extract the Primogenitor Essence from them. He could collect the essence like that on the side while using another uncommon element for his second stage of replacement. With this method, he might actually collect enough essence to attempt using the Illusion Primogenitor bloodline in his third replacement or fourth. This method wouldn't have really worked before for Felix when he was broke and never had enough coins to spare for a long-term side project like this. Let's check the bloodline auctions. Felix went back to the previous list and scrolled down until he spotted three auction houses that would showcase only bloodlines in the event. He chose one and scrolled down the long list of bloodline bottles. Naturally, there wasn't a single bloodline below tier 4. If the bloodline was tier 4, it got either a legendary rank or a rare element such as illusion. It didn't take long before Felix had located the first illusion bloodline. After seeing that the starting price was 380 million SC while it was just an epic tier 4 bloodline, he couldn't help but click his tongue in disgruntlement. Alas! he could only suck it up and mark the bloodline in a notepad with the name of the house. He then carried on searching like this for either illusion bloodlines or epic tier 6 plus sand bloodlines. It took him at least 15 minutes before he finished marking more than 4 bloodlines that he could contest for. There were naturally even more than this number but Felix still needed his coins to buy other things. Alright, let's check on the prices for ancient ruins maps. Felix wished. Hopefully, there aren't many of them so my babies could be contested against even more. Chapter 359, Entering the Events Venue It wasn't hard for Felix to find who was responsible for selling the Ancient Ruins maps since there was only one auction house doing so in the event. Alas, Felix's hopes were shattered after seeing that more than 30 Ancient Ruins maps were planned to be auctioned in the next seven days of the event. This high number was quite understandable since the guests were allowed to place their own ancient ruins maps just like Felix planned on doing. Those were added to the original number posted by the auction house itself. At least, the starting bids aren't shabby. Felix was comforted when he saw that tier 7 ancient ruins maps had 1 billion SC starting bid. 
This tier was supposed to be the least desirable due to the insurmountable difficulty to explore the ruins. Meanwhile, those with lower tiers like tier 1 slash 2 slash 3 slash 4 were placed at 2 billion starting bid. I should garner at least 20 billion SC off my maps if I was unlucky. Felix concluded so from the starting bids and his map tiers. He was positive in earning this since he was planning to ensure that all of his ruins were still unexplored yet. He would be stupid not to take advantage of this information by including it in the contract to increase the price. The bidders would believe it since if they found that the ruins were explored, Felix would be required to pay them back their money plus 50% extra. But Felix didn't have to worry about it due to his future memories. After he marked the auction house name, Felix carried on his planning by checking on other auctions. He spent at least two hours until he finally created an efficient plan for the next seven days. However, the chief's existence was probably going to mess up his planning. After all, Felix couldn't just ditch him and do as he pleased when he got this opportunity only due to him. That's beyond disrespectful and even if Felix decided to go for it, he could still get his invitation link revoked by the chief since he was just his plus one. Since he invited me to buy me over, I can drag him around the auctions that I want to visit and he probably won't complain about it. Felix murmured without a hint of embarrassment. Shameless. You truly don't deserve to be invited anywhere. Asna said in a chiding tone. I didn't ask him to invite me though. Felix said as he shrugged his shoulders carelessly. Felix did appreciate the invitation, but that didn't mean he was going to lower his head to the chief and follow him like a dog in the event. If it was going to be like that, he wouldn't even bother to accept the invitation. Not much time left. Felix glanced at his bracelet and stood up. He opened the VR store and picked a nice formal suit and a randomized face disguise. He wasn't planning on wearing a mask since a random face disguise was more than enough to stop anyone from seeing his real face. The only reason he was wearing that hoodie in the games was to keep that sense of mystery that might attract more fans than just using a random face that wouldn't be approved. One should never underestimate the player's exterior in terms of bringing more profits. One hour later. Felix stood up from the couch and requested the Queen to activate the invitation link after he noticed that four hours had gone by since he woke up. This time, the Queen didn't deny his entry but straightaway started the teleportation process, which was naturally free of charge. As usual, it didn't even take a second before Felix's body got reconstructed back again. However, this time he wasn't teleported inside a white circle within the teleportation company but in front of an enormous wide open wooden gate. It had more of an earthling Chinese style of decoration as it was red and had orange lanterns hovering around it. Felix didn't teleport right in front of it per se but on a long staircase that was leading to this gate. He had opened his eyes to the sight of peak white mountains, clouds and chilling wind caressing his cheeks gently. Even the smell was fragrant like he was standing above a field of stargazer lily flowers. Not a bad choice for a venue this time. Indeed, I disliked last year's venue since it was held in a dome underwater and I am quite a claustrophobic person. Felix's engrossment in the peacefulness of the atmosphere was shattered apart after more and more guests started to get teleported right next to him. Unlike him who was standing alone, they came in twos and were chatting together loudly. Most of them had their real names placed right above their heads, making it obvious that no one was afraid to hide his identity in this event. Yet, Felix managed to recognize only one of them. That's because he was a super famous high ELO player who was pretty active in trending news due to his scandals. As for the rest? He had no clue. Just as Felix wanted to climb the stairs and follow the herd, he received a message from the Queen, Sir Felix. If you want to directly teleport inside the venue, you can do so. No need. Felix shook his head and carried on climbing the stairs while enjoying the view. Alas, he barely took two steps before his bracelet started vibrating. Felix glanced at the screen and noticed that he got a new email from the Maganda chief. He opened it up and read it with his eyes. It was just a single sentence, informing him that they were waiting for him behind the red gate. They. Felix knitted his eyebrows, 
don't tell me others are going to join us. Felix forgot to consider this since he believed that the chief would utmost secure a single invitation letter that allows him to bring plus one. It seems like I am going to meet with his friends. Felix smirked, whatever, I will drag them all with me. After climbing for a couple of minutes, Felix had finally reached the wide open gate and was met with an inconceivable sight that took his breaths away. Buildings of all shapes and sizes were carried by floating rocks, appearing like palaces in heaven. Each one of those buildings did their best effort to be as unique and distinctive as the rest to attract the most attention. Felix eyed the nearest building to him and saw that it had floating stones, leading to its gate that was guarded by two lion statues. They were sitting on their paws with their jaws wide open, appearing like they were roaring at the rest of the buildings. Lion's Gate Auction House Felix read what was written on the golden board that was affixed above the auction gate. He could see that multiple people were already jumping from one floating rock to another, aiming for the gate. Meanwhile, some of them simply floated there with their hands folded behind their backs. Just as Felix wanted to switch his vision to another auction building, he felt that someone had tapped his shoulder. He turned around and saw a middle-aged man, smiling faintly while looking at him. He was wearing a brown robe that had an hexagon eagle in its chest. Felix knew who he was without needing to guess since the man had his name written above his head. Good afternoon, Chief. Felix bowed his head respectfully and said, It's an honor to meet you. The honor is mine. The Chief said with a warm tone. Felix could see that the chief was inspecting his face without attempting to hide it. Yet, Felix didn't exhibit feelings of nervousness or worry at being found out. He just kept a polite smile affixed on his lips while taking glimpses behind the chief, wondering why no one was with him. The chief noticed his bewilderment and face palmed lightly, My apologizes, I thought my daughter gave you permission to see her. Daughter. Felix got even more baffled by what he heard. However, soon he understood what the chief meant after he received a message from the queen, you have been given direct permission to see a holographic image of Princess Alicia. Do you accept? Um, Alicia? Is she one of the two oldest daughters? Although Felix didn't know who she was, he still decided to accept. Alas, he regretted his decision the moment he saw the infamous little devil wearing an elegant black dress while having her yellow bangs moved to the side, exposing her gem-like eyes. Felix wasn't fooled even a bit by her cute appearance as the horrors he heard about her in his previous life were still fresh in his mind. Landlord, we meet again. Princess Bird said smugly. I wish we didn't. Felix murmured to himself, but he still presented his hand for a handshake. He was in the presence of her father and there was no need to provoke her. Are you making fun of me? Princess Bird's eyebrows arched in irritation, can't you see that I am just a hologram? Oh right, you don't possess an invitation link. Felix said casually while withdrawing his hand back. Bastard. That's because you are f asterisking using it. Princess Bird snapped loudly, uncaring about being in public. She knew that besides her father and Felix no one else could see her. She was exactly like a wandering ghost who's here to only look and not interact. That was pissing her off especially when Felix was using her own invitation link and Loki bragging about it. She wasn't the only one who visited the event in this form as most of the guests had brought their plus two in this manner to let them attend. This ghost feature was only allowed in private spaces if the owner gave his permission. Naturally. Everyone could sense those ghosts if they got too close to them. If they were annoyed by it, a simple request from the queen would force those ghosts to go away lest they end up being kicked out from the event. Father, I don't thi, father. Princess Bird was left stunned after seeing that the chief had suddenly disappeared. Where did he go? Felix was also confused by this as he didn't expect that the chief would take off abruptly like this. Soon. He received his answer in an email that was sent to him by the chief, Alicia will be accompanying you while I am dealing with some matters. I will catch up with you guys later. Have fun. 
Felix's eyelids twitched as he kept switching his vision from the email and Princess Bird who was looking everywhere like a child who lost his parents in a carnival. He totally meant to ditch me with his daughter. But why? Felix wondered, does he think I will hit it off with this spoiled brat? Whatever, it's even better this way. Felix grinned widely while walking forward, uncaring about leaving behind Princess Bird. Chapter 360 Placing the Ancient Ruins Maps Wait for me, you prick. Princess Bird floated after him in a rushed manner, worried that she would lose him in the crowd. Thankfully, she was just a hologram, making it easier to enter through the bodies of people in her path. After she caught up to Felix, she floated beside him and threatened, Father gave me the rights to kick you from the event if you didn't listen to me. Ghosts have no rights in this event. Felix said casually while glancing around him in fascination. I dare you to repeat it. He completely ignored Princess Bird's second tantrum and just kept enjoying the bustling atmosphere that made the event resemble a festival. Since every individual here wasn't to be provoked or offended, no one threw his weight around. Felix could see that everyone was queuing patiently to enter the auction houses without raising a farce. Soon, he spotted one of the auctions that he marked in his notepad. He swiftly brought it out and read the items that he wanted from this house. After seeing that they wouldn't be auctioned until the evening, Felix closed down the hologram and skipped past the hovering glass stairs leading to the auction's gate. I should place the ancient ruins maps first before focusing on buying stuff. After deciding so, Felix requested the queen to show him the path towards that establishment. The queen manifested a holographic red arrow that was pointing forward. Felix kept being guided by this arrow until he reached his destination. Just like the rest, this auction was also floating high above the sky. Its design was unique as it appeared like a can of coke with its long spherical shape. Currently, many guests were either floating towards it or stepping on spherical golden balls that took them to its gate. Without further ado, Felix floated with the pack and waited in a somewhat small queue. Immediately after his focus was broken, Princess Bird's annoying rattle resounded in his ears, Why did you pick this auction? Are you planning on buying something? Felix cleaned his ear nonchalantly while continuing to ignore her. He hoped that if he didn't talk to her she might get bored and leave him alone. He already got rid of the chief and it would be even better if he got rid of Princess Bird as well. Soon his turn had arrived and Felix stepped inside the building. The moment his foot was set inside, the space had expanded immensely, showing Felix a wide lobby leading to multiple doors and was packed with guests. What can we do for you sir? An elegant receptionist stood before Felix with a polite smile. Give me your UVR ID. Felix requested without fanfare. Understanding what he meant, the receptionist swiftly forwarded it towards him and Felix added her in his contacts. He then sent a mental message from the Queen, I want to place some stuff but I need you to sign an NDA contract before exposing their names. If it's like this, then please follow me. The receptionist sent another message while guiding Felix towards one of the many closed shut doors. I am not responsible for those matters but Sir Hecarim would take care of your needs. Knock knock. She knocked twice on the door and pushed it slightly, she then said politely, Sir Hecarim, I have brought you another guest. Thank you darling, you may leave. The receptionist bowed her head politely towards Felix and walked away after hearing so. Please come in. Felix didn't dilly-dally in front of the door any longer after receiving permission. He pushed the door open and stepped inside, he then closed it behind him. Only after so. Did he focus on Sir Hecarim who was sitting behind a long desk that had no legs? It was placed on the floor and for a good reason since Sir Hecarim was actually a four-legged man. He was half a human and half a horse. Even the human upper body didn't resemble normal humans due to different displacements of ears and the shape of the nose. His ears were on top of his head while his nose appeared just like two nostrils without a bridge. Adding to his brown fur and hair that spread all over his body, and it became a certainty that Sir Hecarim was from a different race. It's truly a pleasure of mine to meet in person a member of the famed Centaur race. Felix greeted courteously. 
Felix wasn't surprised by meeting a member of the Centaur race since he knew that the human race was giving some sort of a visa to enter the Milky Way galaxy, unlike most races. They only need to not have criminal records and some capital to help them sustain themselves. Just like Luby who was from the Goblin race. I don't deserve such respect. Sir Hecarim smiled politely and gestured with his hoof for Felix to take a seat. Felix went and sat on a soft cushion that was more comfortable than even seating on normal chairs. I have been informed of your situation by that lass. Sir Hecarim said in a soothing tone while forwarding his ID to Felix. I apologize for the inconvenience. Felix sent this message as he forwarded the NDA contract to Sir Hecarim. Felix had to take such precautions since Princess Bird was literally breathing down his neck. She was seeing anything that he did and he didn't like that one bit. Thankfully, Sir Hecarim was a good sport as he signed the contract in a jiffy and started talking business by using the Queen messaging system. I am hoping that your establishment can help me auction five new ancient ruins maps. Felix said straightforwardly. Five at once. Sir Hecarim raised his eyebrow in surprise and a bit of skepticism. He didn't expect Felix to have that many since he could see that he was using a disguise. Random disguises were easy to spot by those professionals who spent decades of their lives looking at them. In the eyes of Sir Hecarim, anyone that bothered to use a disguise in this yearly event was without a strong background to lean on. Felix made it extra obvious by conversing using the Queen and also signing an NDA contract. Please don't think of me as disrespectful or anything, but is there a way to verify that you truly possess five ancient ruins maps? Sir Hecarim sent this message while bowing his head slightly. I am willing to sign an insurance contract with the standard terms. Felix said. He already spent a hefty amount of time reading about the auction deals so he wouldn't get ripped off or have his maps rejected. That's reassuring to hear. Sir Hecarim smiled again feeling quite content by Felix's confidence in his maps. He also wished for them to be real since his establishment would be earning 1% profit from each auctioned map and as the one who was going to seal the deal, he would be getting 0.05% commission from that. May I know the names of the ruins and their tiers? Tier 3 Fuji Ruins, Tier 4 Moonstaff Ruins, Tier 4 Sankra Ruins, Tier 6 Devil Cult, and Tier 6 Dream World Ruins. Felix said them like they were placed at the top of his tongue. Not bad at all. Sir Hecarim's eyes shone with light after hearing that three of them were of a lower tier. He knew that he would earn a lot in his commission if he secured this deal for the house. However, the real shock had yet to come as Felix mentioned after, I can sign a guaranteed contract, entailing that all of those ruins are still unexplored and filled with treasures. Even the tier six ruins. Impossible. How can he be certain about it? Sir Hecarim frowned his eyebrows with a skeptical glance. He knew that it was only possible to make such a guarantee when one had explored the ruins and seen the treasures. But if one could reach that far, why bother even sell the coordination of the ruins? He understood that those people willing to sell the coordination was because they lucked out on them and they felt that it was less troublesome to get coins for the coordination instead of hiring a mercenary squad or invite close friends etc. So many problems could occur when doing it without professionals. Sir Hecarim had guessed that Felix was in the same situation. He had the information but not the resources to explore them. But this all changed when the guarantee contract was brought up. Now, he had no idea what to think of Felix and if this whole deal was just a prank by one of his colleagues since none of this made sense to him. However, he still decided to accept it instead of doubting Felix and kicking him out. Are you sure about your decision? Sir Hecarim warned solemnly, do understand that if the client who bought your map found nothing in the ruins, the penalty wouldn't be easy to stomach. Thank you for the concerns but I know what I am doing. Felix snapped his finger and three contracts were abruptly manifested before Sir Hecarim. They were the three contracts that he wrote for this negotiation. One was for insurance, another for guaranteed treasures, and lastly, one for the entire deal. Chapter 361, Entering the First Auction 
Sir Hecarim brought one close to him and started reading it carefully. Felix didn't say anything else as he just remained seated waiting for Sir Hecarim to finish. It took almost two hours before Sir Hecarim lifted his head and started questioning Felix about the terms. You wrote that the explorers needed to be wearing AP bracelets and especially the one who possessed the coordinations. Sir Hecarim nodded his head in approval, this will ensure that no trickery will occur during the exploration to cheat you out of your money. As Felix said, he knew what he was doing. All the terms written in those contracts were worked by him and a professional contract writer who got paid to see through the loopholes and close them. The guarantee contract did have quite a few loopholes and the most dangerous one would be exploring the ruins first without wearing bracelets. Then, when the real client explores them while wearing the bracelet, he would show the queen that ruins were empty of treasures unlike what he was promised. However, rarely would anyone try to pull those tricks off since it was hard to fool the queen when she was literally in people's minds. Still, it was better to take precautions. Felix was confident that the ruins had treasures within them since Asna looked it up in his memories and saw that all of them were proclaimed to have bountiful treasures. Meanwhile, Sir Hecarim kept asking questions on each term that brought his interest. Questions ranged from when Felix's map would be auctioned and what's position would be given in the auction. Were some of them were going to be placed near the end, marking their importance and such or not. Felix was satisfied by some answers and some he wasn't pleased by. But, this was how negotiations were supposed to be. He couldn't be winning them all. This back and forth Q&A finished after three hours. Would you like something to eat? Sir Hecarim offered while rubbing his eyebrows with his talk of his brown hair, controlling like it was part of his limbs. Unreactive to such a sight, Felix shook his head and said, I still have an auction that I need to catch up to, so let's conclude the deal first. I see. Sir Hecarim nodded his head and brought the contracts close to his face. Without hesitation, he signed all three contracts next to Felix's name. There was still an empty spot for the client to sign as well. After seeing so, Felix brought out the notepad where he wrote the coordination of each ancient ruins map and sent it to Sir Hecarim who got quite excited after reading them. Naturally, since he signed the contract he was forbidden from sharing this information with anyone. Even the auction owner didn't have the right to know the content of this deal. This would make the entire transaction include only Felix, Sir Hecarim, and the buyer. Good, good. Sir Hecarim bubbled in his mind, I will earn at least 40 million SC from this. I want to sign another contract for early payment. Felix abruptly sent this message. Oh. Sir Hecarim asked, how much do you want for them? Give me your minimum estimate of their total price. Felix said. Sir Hecarim thought about it for a second and said firmly, the worst price they could bring you would be 21 billion SC. Oh. That's a bit higher than I anticipated. Felix's eyes beamed in elation. He totally believed in Sir Hecarim's estimate since he was a professional who was doing this for years unlike him. Are you satisfied with the amount? Sir Hecarim asked. Immediately after seeing Felix nodding his head, Sir Hecarim sent a pre-written standard contract that was always used for this kind of deal. Felix had already read one previously and everything was the same besides small differences. The contract's gestation entailed that Felix would be receiving an initial payment of 21 billion SC. When his products get auctioned successfully, the house would deduct that amount from the final earning and send Felix what's left. If the estimate was wrong and the maps ended up getting sold cheaper than 21 billion SC, Felix would be required to pay back what he owned. After Felix made sure that he didn't overlook any loophole, he signed it and kept a copy of it. T.I. Ring you have been wired 21 billion SC from the aquatic auction house. Felix smiled widely after seeing the notification emerge in front of him. He never got wired such a large amount at once and it felt excellent to see those many zeros in his bank account. Felix's ego even started to inflate after knowing that he currently possessed 36 billion SC total. In his eyes, with this amount, he would finally be joining the whales in this event and compete with them for jaw-breaking treasures. 
This was quite a pleasant deal. Sir Hecarim spoke out loud for the first time in those couple of hours. Princess Bird who was sleeping peacefully above Felix's head opened her eyes groggily at the abrupt sound. Likewise Sir Hecarim. Felix proclaimed with a satisfied smile while standing on his feet. He bowed his head politely and said one last time, let's meet again someday. Then, he turned around and opened the door of the room. He closed it shut after he heard Sir Hecarim's polite response. What did you sell? Princess Bird asked for the millionth time while floating in Felix's front, trying to block his path. Alas, Felix treated her like air and floated right through her. Stop ignoring me you prick. She cursed while chasing after him. She is truly the living incarnation of Uisna. Felix fired shots without care. F asterisk CK off, don't compare me with that whiny kid. Asna cursed while glancing at his situation from her bed. Just saying. Felix shrugged his shoulders as he glanced at his bracelet. Upon seeing that there was only 15 minutes before the auction for energy stones begin, Felix stopped fooling around and requested the queen to show him the way. Like before, an arrow that was pointing forward emerged in front of Felix and he swiftly floated in that direction. Arg! Stop dragging me around! Tell me where are we going at least? Nope. A couple of minutes later, Felix was sitting in a packed noisy auditorium, appearing like many baby spiders stacked together from high above. From a single glance, anyone would guess that at least thousands of people were sitting in this curved auditorium facing a well-lighted stage. Obviously, there were VIP rooms but they had been already taken by individuals who came way earlier than the rest. In this yearly event, there were no pre-booked VIP rooms for the guests. That's because everyone had weight on their words and actions, and it wouldn't be fitting to give some rooms and others not. Hence, the rooms were taken on a first-serve basis. That's only for those types of open auditoriums. Since Felix was quite late, he ended up getting teleported in this chair that was right in the middle of the auditorium. Honestly, no one seemed to complain about sitting close to each other since everyone was considered a worthy peer. If those individuals were placed in an auditorium filled with commoners, their reaction wouldn't be this cool. Peng Peng Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Belvarian Auction House. After hearing a greeting from an elderly white-haired man who had manifested in the center of the stage, the chatter quietened down. I am just here to welcome you and wish that you enjoy your time under our hospitality. The elderly man smiled gently as he said so. Then, he disappeared again. But this time, a holographic image of an otherworldly beauty had emerged in his place. She had an expressionless face as she glanced at the people who had their focus placed on her. I am the Queen AI and I will be acting as the auctioneer. She said with her usual monotonous voice. It was a bit unusual for Felix to see the queen while she speaks but he didn't react much since he knew that her body and face were fake. It was known knowledge that the queen had never been seen before. Hence, every race had its own self-created versions of how the queen would look like. In this case, she appeared like a goddess with her artificial beauty that was too perfect to be true. Let's begin. Without further ado, she displayed the first auctioned item which was just a bunch of pitch black stones bundled together. They kept emitting dark waves ceaselessly. Those weren't added animations but the stones were truly capable of doing so in reality. The reason why. The first bundle is 500 high grade death elemental stones. She added expressionlessly, the starting bid is 500 million SC. Before her voice could even trail off. Noisy chatter broke off in the auditorium followed by a vicious war of bidding. 600 million SC from room 15. 670 million SC from the seat 199. 710 million SC from the seat 1788. She kept calling the bids clearly, even though only a few individuals. 999 million SC from room 70. 999 million SC from room 70 going once, twice, sold. Clap clap. 
Felix joined the applause as well but his eyelids kept twitching at the sight of the last bid for only 500 high-grade death element stones. Heck, he knew that those stones weren't going to be used for anything besides research purposes or as a material. Yet, the price still reached 1 billion and this made him sweat a bit at what was waiting for him when the illusion stones make an entry. Dear Lord, have mercy on my wallet. He prayed in his mind while easing down on the applause like the rest. Chapter 362, Securing 10,000 High-Grade Illusion Stones The moment the applause stopped, the queen displayed the next bundle. This time it was filled with orange stones, and it was obvious that the number was way more than what was shown before. The second bundle is 100,000 High-Grade Fire Elemental Stones? She followed with, the starting bid is 100 million SC. Naturally, the death elemental stones were placed at the start to fire off the auction and set the start's intensity. But following it, the other bundles were just from either common element or uncommon element. Felix merely kept spectating as everyone fought for tooth and nail for them since energy stones were a must commodity to have. There was never having too much when it comes to energy stones. Before long, 100,000 high-grade sand elemental stones were auctioned as well. Princess Bird floated in front of Felix and asked with her eyes narrowed, Why aren't you bidding for them? Or are you bidding telepathically? She got closer to his expressionless face and started examining him, wanting to see if he would show any reaction. Alas, he was as stoic as the British Queen's guards. Tisk! Princess Bird clicked her tongue in annoyance and promised, I will find out what you are doing one way or another. Still unresponsive, Felix scratched his chin while thinking, what's my maximum bid for illusion stones? I should probably set it at 5 billion SC. If it goes above it, I can only give up on it. Just as he thought so, the queen had removed the bundle that had just got auctioned successfully and replaced it with another one that was full of peculiar looking stones. They didn't have a specific set of colors as they kept constantly changing between them. Sometimes, they were colorless and sometimes they turn into shimmering rainbow stones. Illusion stones, finally. Felix exclaimed in his mind but his reaction on the outside was the same as others next to him, enthralled and fascinated. The twenty-fourth bundle is ten thousand high-grade illusion elemental stones. The queen carried on monotonously, the starting bid is six hundred and fifty million SC. Before Felix could even try to bid low so he could test the water, the price had climbed to 720 million SC from a single bid. This is going to be tough. Felix rested his chin on his hand and kept watching the ongoing fierce bidding. 840 million from room 33. 950 million from seat 133. 2.3 billion from seat 98. Only after the bid reached this amount did the queen started to slow down her calls. Even the bids weren't getting increased by hundreds of millions anymore, lowering the intensity for a bit. Felix could see with his enhanced vision that most interested parties that were bidding fiercely before, were starting to exhibit signs of discontentment. Yet, they were still going at it, increasing the bid by 50 million SC each time. In a few moments, the price was about to reach a whopping 3 billion and Felix's palms were starting to get sweaty since he noticed that more than 5 bidders had no intentions of stopping soon. F asterisk CK it, I can't let them keep hoping that they might win it if they kept increasing slowly. Felix decided to bid big and big he did. Queen, please increase the B. 3.2 billion from an anonymous guest. The Queen announced abruptly cutting off one of the five bidders in mid-sentence. He was just about to increase the bid by 40 million SC before the bid jumped from 3 billion to 3.2 billion, increasing by a whopping 3 200 million at once. Mother Fasterisker, did you have to do that in my turn? The bidder cursed in his mind while closing his mouth shut, not daring to follow up after that. He was already past the budget deducted to this auction and he had no intentions to follow that madman. In his eyes, this was just an auction for energy stones and capital should really be saved for other treasures and items in different auctions. He wasn't the only one thinking like this as the other three also decided to withdrew silently from the bidding war. 
This left only Felix and another man, who didn't hesitate to increase the bid by 50 million. Felix waited for two seconds until the Queen repeated the latest bid, then he increased it by 100 million SC. This time, the other bidder didn't raise instantly like before. 3.350 billion from an anonymous guest. 3.350 billion from an anonymous guest, going once, twice. 3.400 billion from seat 5. FCKUU. Felix bawled in his mind, annoying both Asna and the J, Ramon Gindra who had just started a new game of chess. Mute him. The J, Ramon Gindra said calmly while setting up his side of the board. Asna did so by a finger snap and started working on her own pieces in utter tranquility. Good thing they disconnected as Felix kept cursing each time that F asterisker increased the bid after him. 3,600 billion from a seat 5. 3.700 billion from an anonymous guest. The other guests were left speechless by the ongoing bidding war as they didn't doubt for a second that the amount proposed was not worth it at all for those energy stones. After all, 10,000 high-grade illusion stones would never bring them back the same profit if they used them as materials for potions or substances. As for using them to recover energy? No one was a fool to waste them like that since recovering energy could be done using medium-grade stones. Plus, the illusion bloodliners never reach the fourth stage of replacement since tier 5 illusion beasts were either extinct or hiding. Felix knew so as well. Hence he was quite pissed that he ended up against a bidder who seemed quite desperate for them. However, he still had no intentions of stopping since the final bid had yet to hit his limits. Thankfully, it seemed like even that bidder was starting to feel the brunt of the large price as he kept waiting until the queen was about call trice, then he adds an extra 20 million. 4.100 billion from an anonymous guest. F asterisk CK it, if he added after this. I am will leave it to him. Felix couldn't take it anymore. He wanted to keep going until 5 billion, but he felt that a vein would definitely snap if he did so. He was doing his very best to keep appearing as stoic as possible when his heart was about to burst out in flames. 4.100 billion from an anonymous guest, going once, twice, sold. The queen struck the gavel forcefully without giving even a second to Felix's contender to make a comeback. Clap clap clap. On salty, Felix didn't even know if he should feel happy by winning the bid or not as he felt that he had gotten cheated out of at least half a billion in this bidding war. Sigh, no harm was done, money can be earned again but chances like those were hard to land on. He closed his eyes and took a deep breath. Then. He smiled faintly and started clapping his hands joining the deafening applause. Princess Bird didn't notice his emotional turmoil as she was engrossed in the bidding war before. If it were the chief, sitting next to Felix, he would have noticed everything. So, it was a blessing that Princess Bird was accompanying him. After the applause died down, the queen sent a message to Felix, Congratulation, the serial code of the bundle had been sent to you per email. Felix didn't respond as his attention was stolen by a holographic notification, entailing that 4 billion 100 million SC had been wired to the Belvarian auction house. Felix sighed softly and removed the cursed notification from his face. However, he still didn't teleport outside the auction like some guests were doing after securing what they wanted. He wasn't stupid to leave right now since Princess Bird could guess that he had already gotten what he wanted. Hence, he waited for extra 10 minutes before snapping his finger, activating the teleportation process. Wait for me. Princess Bird beseeched with a panicked tone after seeing that he was breaking into light particles. Since she was just a hologram, she couldn't really teleport outside like Felix. Thus, she had to float outside of the building manually. By the time she reached the gate, Felix was nowhere to be found. Landlord. I will kill you. Princess Bird bellowed with flushed cheeks in anger after realizing that she got ditched behind. She quickly chose a direction and started searching for him. She didn't want to inform her father now as she knew that he would scold her for losing him in the first place. While she was searching everywhere like a woman on crack, 
Felix was walking casually in the streets while having a different face on and clothes. He even removed his name from above his head to stay subtle. Currently, he was heading to one of the three bloodline auctions in this event. He marked it previously since there was an epic tier 6 sand bloodline within their items list and an epic tier 4 illusion bloodline. He wanted to secure them no matter what since the customs taxes between empires didn't apply to the attendants in this event. If it weren't for so, Felix would have coughed blood after reading the customs taxes for the 10k high-grade stones. After all, the weight of such a large delivery was definitely going to make him pay extra 50 million SC. Chapter 363, Buying the Bloodlines In a short while, Felix could be seen sitting inside a small-sized room that had only two chairs and a glass window. This wasn't a VIP room but just a regular one inside this auction house, which didn't have any seats in it like the previous one. Everyone had his own small room that was peeking at the holographic image of the queen. She was floating in the center while displaying a bottle with dark liquid within it. This is an epic rank tier 6 Lavania bulldozer bloodline. The starting bid is 700 million SC. She followed with, its full details are on your screens. You have two minutes to read them properly before we begin bidding. Felix glanced at them but didn't read them carefully. Instead, he scrolled on the updated items list, wanting to see what items were added recently by the guests. While he was reading them, the bidding for the bloodline had already started and the price had climbed through 1 billion SC without any signs of stopping. Oh! Felix exclaimed in delight after seeing that another epic tier 4 illusion bloodline was recently added. He was already aiming to buy one epic tier 4 illusion bloodline from this auction and another one that would be placed on a different day. He knew that only by buying a lot of them could he actually obtain 1% or 2% of the illusion primogenitor. After all, they were just a tier 4 beasts. If it was for any other uncommon element, Felix wouldn't even bat an eye on them. Alas, if he ever wanted to utilize his illusion element, this was the way to go. Clap clap clap. Felix joined the abrupt applause after the successful auctioning of the item. When it quietened down, the queen displayed another bloodline and Felix lowered his head in disinterest. It wasn't what he sought and probably it was going to take a while until the bloodlines that he wanted to make an appearance. After all, there were multiple elements. Even if the auction decided to display a single bloodline for every element besides rare, the number of bottles could reach hundreds. As expected, Felix had to wait for an entire hour until the Queen mentioned, this is an epic tier 4 Spectrum Mornling bloodline. The starting bid is 250 million SC. She gave them two minutes to read its details and Felix decided to reread them since he didn't remember much. Slash slash bloodline name, Spectrum Mornling. Tier, 4. Rank, Epic. Element, Illusion. Passive Abilities Pool, Illusionary Vision, Skin Hardening, Hallucination Immunity, etc. Active Abilities Pool, Elusive Suggestion, Illusion Reflection, Illusionary Skin, etc. History, Spectrum Mornling is a worm species beast that uses illusion element to avoid predators. It's currently being bred domestically by the Welsh family in Bardo Empire slash slash. Felix wasn't surprised in the slightest by the fact that the beast was being domestically bred instead of hunted in the Andromeda galaxy. He understood that 99% of the illusion bloodlines in the markets were all sold by the breeding families. As for the hunted illusion beasts? They seldom make an appearance in the auctions. If they did, it would just a pitiful tier 1 beast. That's because it was almost impossible to hunt them down with their peculiar abilities. If even Tier 1 was giving this much trouble to hunters, how about Tier 5 plus? Until now, no one actually knew if there was even a Tier 5 illusion beast or not since they were never spotted before. Felix knew about the primogenitor's existence, he understood that probably even Tier 7 illusion beasts were existing. After all, for the illusion primogenitor's bloodline to reach even Tier 1 beast, it was impossible not to reach higher tiered beasts first. He believed that the only reason no one was finding those high-tiered beasts was that they were disguising themselves. The J, 
Ramongandra had stated before that no one had seen the real illusion primogenitor due to his constant realistic shape-shifting. Those beasts might not be able to shape-shift as good as the illusion primogenitor but they could at least fool humans. So, those illusion beasts might have been spotted millions of times by hunters unbeknownst to them. Please begin bidding. Felix closed down the details after hearing the Queen's announcement. 280 million from room 14. 310 million from room 133. 390 million from room 63. By now, the price had already exceeded the known epic tier 5 bloodlines in the market and it was still climbing slowly but surely. Felix decided to join the fun by increasing 60 million at once, pushing the price to 450 million. After a couple of back and forth bidding, Felix ended up winning it after his last bid that reached 590 million SC. That's double epic tier 5 sand bloodlines. Yet, Felix wasn't even bothered by it as he knew that his money would return one way or another after he places those bottles back in other auctions. If it wasn't against the rules to place them back in this event, he would have done so after extracting the essence. Alas, the auctions didn't want to see guests buying products in this auction and resell them in another. That would mess up the entire seven days event. A couple of hours later, Felix had already secured the other illusion bloodlines after paying 510 million for it. Now, he was simply waiting for the epic tier 6 sand bloodline to make an appearance. It was kept at the end of the event with five more bloodlines with the same rank and tier. Thankfully, it was presented sooner than the rest as the queen had displayed the bottle in the air and told them that the starting price was 650 million SC. Felix reread its details in those two minutes of wait and he couldn't help but hope that everyone's reaction would be lukewarm since the bloodline's abilities weren't really the best compared to its counterparts. That's due to being from the cat species. After all, the evolutionary traits of cats weren't really that compatible with the sand element. But they were amazing if the element was darkness. That same concept applied to other species. For example, bird species with water element weren't going to be as good as marine beasts with the same element. Hence, compatibility should also be taken into consideration when choosing a bloodline. Felix never bothered by any of this since he was simply seeking the primogenitor essence from those bloodlines. 690 million from room 1784. 730 million from room 986. 790 million from room 41. 820 million from room 1784. As he hoped for, the queen started the auctioning, the bids were coming from just four rooms and the newer bids weren't increasing by much. So far so good. Felix smiled faintly, I will make a move when the price reaches 1.5 billion SC. It took at least a minute before the bid reached it since only two bidders were left at the end and they were increasing by 20 million each time. Queen, please add 50 million SC. Felix requested out loud, not bothering to speak in his mind since no one was with him and those rooms weren't accessible by the ghosts. 1.550 billion from room 99. The Queen announced. The two bidders went silent after realizing that another competitor had joined them. However, they still wanted to test Felix's limits as one of them increased by 40 million and the other followed after him by 30 million. Queen, 200 million. Felix said calmly. With that, the final bid had reached 1.820 billion SC. Those two bidders wanted to jack up the price a bit more just to spite Felix for ruining their chances at buying the bloodliner cheaper, but they didn't dare to. After all, they didn't want the bloodline to end up in their hands with that price when the beast's species wasn't even the best in the market for sand element. They could purchase a scorpion epic tier 6 bloodline by just adding 200 million SC or so. Hence, they stopped bidding at once. 1.820 SC billion from room 99, going once, twice, sold. Bam. Clap clap. Phew, finally a lucky break. Felix sighed in relief after hearing the gavel sound followed by the applause. However, he didn't stick around to bask in them as he needed to catch up to another auction that was selling potions, substances, materials, 
etc. His main target was Elemental Potion, if he found it cheaper, he wouldn't hesitate to grab one. Felix would always be needing new elements if he wanted to continue on his unique primogenitor's bloodline path. However, if the potion was too expensive, Felix could only give up on it and continue relying on materials to concoct it. After all, its market price was 5 billion SC. Since there was no supply, this price could multiply with the snap of a finger in this event. Although the rest of the humans who awakened a new element with the elemental potion weren't going to enhance their affinity rating as fast as Felix, still they could totally reach 50% if they were willing to pay big bucks. Anyone aiming for the elemental potion was beyond filthy rich and could afford to waste tens of billions to raise it. Felix didn't want to commit most of his leftover capital to fight it out against them. He still wanted to buy a decent body artifact, other potions, the elemental potion materials, and more. Chapter 364, The Anti-Royal Alliance After Felix's body got reconstructed outside of the gate, he massaged his temples with an irked expression, I can't stay hidden from that brat lest she tells her father and he ends up joining me. Felix knew that ditching Princess Bird for a couple of hours wouldn't cause any issues since the chief wasn't going to kick him from the event because of it. However, if he kept pushing his luck like this, it would appear too disrespectful to the chief who was the sole reason he could attend this auction. Who knows, he could end up getting kicked out by the chief if he felt displeased by him. Felix didn't want to get kicked out on the first day of the event as he knew that after each day, the quality and rarity of items would keep increasing. At the end of the event, there would be one final CO-hosted auction that could be accessed only by guests who spent at least 5 billion in the event. Felix didn't want to miss it even though he had no idea what items would be auctioned in it. Hence, he switched back to his previous disguise and showed his landlord's name above his head. Then, he walked in direction of a restaurant, wanting to grab a bite since the next auction on his list wouldn't start until two hours. Well, it had already started and finished selling their first batch of items. Felix was planning to attend the second batch in the day. This was how every auction was operating in this event to give the guest a chance to visit as many auctions as possible while also not missing out on too many items due to time constraints. In a few minutes, Felix had reached the entrance of an ancient-looking building that was only two-story high. Felix waited for a couple of seconds for his turn in the queue before going inside. Just like always, space inside was enlarged immensely, making it possible for thousands of people to eat on tables. While he could see that the restaurant was packed and bustling, he realized that the noise never went beyond a certain limit. This made the scene seem lively but at the same time tolerable to sit in and enjoy one's food. Queen, please teleport me to an empty tab, for real. Felix's request was cut short after his eyes landed on the chief staring at him speechlessly with Princess Bird pouting by his side. There were a woman and three men sitting with him at the same table, which was placed near the entrance, making it pretty visible to anyone who entered. I will be damned. Felix's eyelids twitched as he swiftly turned his head left, acting like he didn't see them. Alas, the moment Princess Bird saw him, it was nigh impossible for him to escape sitting with them. There he is. Princess Bird pointed her finger at Felix and grumbled to her father, he ditched me at the Belvarian auction house. I even searched hours for high. Before she finished on her rant, she hastily covered her mouth shut with her hands appearing like she said something she shouldn't have. The chief displeased expression as he eyed her made pretty obvious that he didn't like what she just mentioned. Didn't you tell me an hour ago that you felt bored and left him in the auction? The chief questioned her telepathically with a deep frown, daring to lie to me now. I didn't want you to scold me. She sent a message with a wronged expression, plus, it's that bastard's fault. We did him honor by inviting him and he took it for granted. Shift the blame all you want. The chief gave her a strict gaze, you are still not escaping punishment for lying. This is so unfair. Princess Bird's eyes got watery as she knew that a hellish training awaits her after the event. As for landlord, I will deal with him on my own. 
The chief sent this message while gesturing kindly with his hand for Felix to approach the table. God damn it, should have fasted for the day if I knew this would have happened. Felix complained in his mind while walking towards them with a polite smile. After reaching the chief's side, he nodded his head respectfully towards him and the seniors on the table with him. Then, he glanced at a grieved Princess Bird and asked shamelessly, Where did you run off? Didn't we agree to meet at the auction's gate? Princess Bird's eyes widened in disbelief at the crap he was spewing without a change of expression. Just as she opened her mouth, wanting to deny his bullshit, the chief laughed loudly and said, Do forgive my daughter. She could be a bit clumsy and forgetful. Felix shook his head and said with a satisfied expression, I beg to differ, I truly enjoyed her company. And if I didn't lose her, I would have loved to have her around in the previous auction. Yu Yu. Princess Bird managed to utter only this as her quickened breaths from rage were making it impossible to construct a sentence. Looking at her reddened cheeks and ears, Felix smiled gently, I am glad that you feel the same way. Not wanting to make her cough out blood or faint, Felix turned his vision to the four seniors and requested politely, May I join you for dinner? Be my guest. A man with a long white mustache that was reaching his chest, gestured for Felix to take the empty seat near the chief. Old Eagle, aren't you going to introduce us to your friend? Zazia tucked a lock of hair behind her ear as she asked calmly. Meanwhile, she sent a message to the chief, should we ask him about his backers here or keep it as planned? Let's wait. It's too public and there are many ghosts around us. The chief responded while extending his hand at Felix, This is Landlord, a mid-tier gold player, owner of three unique titles, and also one of the nominees to the low ELO Yearly Best Player Award. Amazing! So this is the player who created a ruckus fifteen days ago? What a remarkable young lad! The four seniors all acted astonished in their own way, making Felix wave his hands as he replied, You are giving me too much credit seniors. Ha, they are thinking that I don't know about them and their little alliance. Felix smirked in his mind as he looked at the otherworldly youthful faces of those fogies. If it wasn't for Felix's previous life memories, he would simply know about their backgrounds but not their hidden alliance that wasn't out in the open currently. How could he not know about the anti-royalty alliance that was going to declare war against the Mariana Empire 15 years later if the timeline wasn't messed up by him? It was the first massive war in the Milky Way galaxy for hundreds of thousands of years. As the progenitors, he had remembered vividly. Zazia Everglow, a legendary peak sixth stage bloodliner and the future queen of the Everglow Kingdom. Felix started recalling the pieces that he knew. Her family was allegedly assassinated by the royal family, leaving only her uncle behind, who was sitting on the throne. Felix didn't know exactly if the royal family truly had any relations to the assassination or not, but he knew that the Everglow Kingdom was the strongest kingdom in the Empire. The king was an Origin Realm bloodliner while their fleets were over-equipped. They could even give the royal family a run for their money if a war had occurred. This was the reason why everyone assumed that the royal family was responsible for the assassination since the kingdom was clearly started to be considered a threat to the Empire. This was all that Felix managed to remember after seeing Zoja's face. Meanwhile, for those three fogies who were appearing even younger than he was, Felix recalled that they were the three leaders of the Sanctum Federation. This federation was known for being the third strongest superpower in the Empire since it was created by a tight knotted alliance of three kingdoms. Tight knotted in the sense that their territories were sharing the borders and all big decisions in each kingdom were being voted on. This was as much as Felix's shitty memory could help him identify those four. However, knowing that he was being targeted by the entire anti-royal alliance instead of just the Maganda chief changed Felix's perspective about the entire matter. At first, he believed that the chief was aiming for his backers to obtain the method to create those abnormal bloodlines to empower his people, but now? He was 70% certain that they were desperate to obtain his method to empower their bloodliners for the incoming war. It seems like I am going to F asterisk CK up the timeline pretty heavily this time. Felix sighed in his mind while joining in meaningless flattery and conversations with the seniors. 
none of them mentioned anything private about him or the bloodlines. They kept the conversation flat to the point Felix started to doubt his judgment. Alas, his doubts evaporated after he was requested to meet them up in the final CO hosted auction. If you don't manage to secure a spot on your own, we will invite you as a ghost to spectate the greatest auction in the galaxy. The chief informed. Thank you for the offer. I will make sure to be there. Felix smiled politely while standing up. It was truly a pleasure to meet you seniors. The pleasure is ours. The seniors smiled back. Go with him. The chief warned the disgruntled Alicia, don't create any more troubles for Sir Landlord. Father. You are. Just as Princess Bird wanted to go on a rant, she was glared at by the chief and she held her a grievance in. Princess, let's enjoy ourselves. Felix grinned faintly as he walked towards the door. Bastard. Princess Bird's cheeks reddened while floating behind him. Don't say such a bullshit that could be misunderstood. Seeing that he was far from the seniors, Felix dropped his act and ordered, Brat, if you don't want to get ditched again, you better stop annoying me in the auctions. Who do you think you are to order me around? Princess Bird scoffed. Not even my father dare to order me around. No wonder you turned into a spoiled brat. Felix murmured while checking on the map. After setting up his next destination, he set off while being chased by the grumpily Princess Bird. Chapter 365, Slavery in the UVR Era Six days had gone by quickly. Felix had ended up purchasing only a couple of useful potions and an expensive body artifact that cost him 5 billion SC. But it was totally worth it since its defenses were capable of holding against even peak fourth stage bloodliners and had other utilities that were too perfect for him. Naturally, this artifact was using rechargeable engraved Futhark, making it possible for Felix to continue using them for a long time. Sadly, he didn't get his hands on the elemental potion since its final price had climbed to 9 billion SC. Felix felt that it was more worth it to commission it as he did previously than get spend that amount on one. However, since the concoction wasn't 100%, Felix was risking losing all of his materials when it fails. So, this method could end up costing him even more if he had an unlucky strike and failed three times in a row. Still, Felix spent 4 billion SC to secure an entire batch of materials in the materials auction. He preferred holding into his game points whenever he could buy anything with coins. In those six days, Felix had spent a total of 16 billion SC and was left with another 25. The reason it got increased by 5 billion was due to his ancient ruins maps getting auctioned at a higher price than the minimum estimate. He was given 20 billion SC at the start by Sir Hecarim and after they got auctioned, Felix received 25 billion SC. Obviously, the aquatic auction had deducted the 20 billion SC that they owned plus 1% fees for each auctioned map. If it wasn't for this yearly auction event that was packed with filthy rich lords from all corners of the galaxy, Felix would have merely gotten 15 billion SC off those five maps. That's because he didn't have the necessary channels to get it into the hands of those high echelons members. Thankfully, it all worked well and now he still had enough capital to join the biggest auction in the galaxy while still having secured all of the marked items and materials that he needed, well, not all of them since he was missing one last thing. Currently, Felix was walking with Princess Bird towards that auction. She seemed quite embarrassed as she kept blushing at what Felix was saying. Are you sure about coming with me to this one? Felix stressed, they are auctioning slaves from multiple races and they would be all nude. Even humans. You are lying to me. Princess Bird replied while lowering her head, they are not slaves but servants. So, I doubt that the auction would strip them out of their clothes. Hee <laughs> hee, you are too naive for your own good. Felix insisted. Servant is just a nice term to describe slaves in our modern era to make it morally justifiable to buy and sell people who signed a slave contract. He chuckled, do you think that the auction would dare sell them without showing their assets? So, so what? Princess Bird stuttered with her ears turning red, 
I am old enough to see people and a k e d and I don't mind doing so. Old enough my ass. Felix scoffed, you are barely 13 years old. I am not 13 years old. Princess Bird yelled in agitation, I am 16 years old. In my tribe, I am already an adu.l.t. I see. Felix shrugged his shoulders, I guess it's fine then to see other people's genitals together. Upon hearing so, Princess Bird's heartbeat started accelerating after imagining that sight. She might be 16 years old and considered as an adu.l.t in her tribe but she was still a child in her heart due to her father spoiling. For a child like her who still didn't even grab hands with a man, it was a giant leap to straightaway look at nude people with a man. She tried to toughen it up to not appear like a child but on second thoughts, she realized that she would die out of embarrassment if attended this auction with Felix. Cough, my father is calling me. Princess Bird glanced at her bracelet and swiftly took off. However, she didn't forget to leave behind a snarky remark, just to let you know. I would have totally gone with you if it wasn't for him. I am not a child. Hee <laughs> hee, finally I got rid of her. Felix smirked in his mind while increasing his speed towards that auction. Felix was always planning on buying two or three servants that were loyal to him and could ease up some of his burdens. However, he never had the capital or the network to buy strong ones either in the fourth stage of replacement and above. As for below? He never considered them as a worthy investment. After all, he wanted to help his servants continue their integration and it was better if they were higher, making it possible for him to push them into peak sixth stage of replacement. Felix even had plans of giving them a primogenitor bloodline at their sixth stage of replacement, making them be the strongest bloodliners below origin realm. There were hundreds of elements and this meant there were hundreds of primogenitors. Felix couldn't use all of their bloodlines and it was going to be extremely foolish to not take advantage of the rest. He had far-reaching plans of creating a loyal platoon of primogenitor bloodliners that could accompany him and always be on his service. Naturally, to avoid awakening the primogenitor's consciousness Felix wasn't going to make them reach even 90% in their integration. After all, he was 100% certain that none of them would betray him or make a move on him due to the Queen's existence supervising every small disloyal thought they had. However, if the primogenitor woke up and actually possessed their bodies unlike what the J. Ramungandra did, those contract restraints would break since the consciousness would die. Felix would be left to fend for himself against a primogenitor in his servant's body. With that being said, Felix was only thinking about those matters for now and it wasn't going to happen until quite a long time. At least until the servants that he was going to buy reach the sixth stage of replacement. He chose that stage specifically because it was impossible to replace the primogenitor's bloodline without Asna's presence or the owner of the bloodline. Even using another primogenitor bloodline wouldn't get the job done but make it even worse since those bloodlines would fight it out when there was oppression on them. That's without considering the fact that the primogenitor would end up waking up before the bloodliner even reached 99% of integration to replace it. All in all, the sixth stage of replacement was the best stage for other humans to utilize the primogenitor bloodline, unlike Felix's situation. In a short while, Felix could be seen chilling inside a room that somewhat resembled the one he was previously at. The only difference would be its size as this one was quite bigger. However, there were still just two chairs in it. In front of Felix, there was a glass window that was peeking into the holographic image of the Queen. But unlike before, there was a floating circular white stage that could be seen by every window in this auditorium. Let's begin. The queen said expressionlessly while pointing her finger at the center of the circular stage. Felix paid close attention to the gathered light particles that were shaping up to a human body but had a weird head and a tail. After the lights went off, Felix exclaimed in shock, they actually forced one to sign the contract. How? It wasn't just him who reacted this excessively after seeing a pale white boy with furry grey legs and arms. He had a thick fluffy grey tail as well. Yet Felix's attention was on the boy's face that resembled a fierce winter wolf with his long ears that were on top of his grey hair. 
he was wearing only his underwear, hiding his sensitive parts. He appeared like he was dozing off as he could barely keep his eyes open. This is Lilam from the Winter Wolf race in the Bloodstream Galaxy. The starting bid is 800 million SC. She carried on indifferently, his full details are on your screens. You have 10 minutes to read them properly before we begin bidding. They really got one from that race. Felix truly had his eyes opened after seeing a member of the Winter Wolf race who was widely known in the UVR for being impossible to enslave due to their uncompromising dignity. They had no issues dying and seeing their closed people dying with them if it meant keeping their dignity intact. This made it impossible to make them willingly sign the slave contract. Naturally, there were other ways to turn one into a slave but none of them would be as good as using the AP bracelet and the queen. After all, chi.p.s and such that forcefully manipulate the thoughts of the slave were going to bring down the quality of the slave. Meanwhile, using other ways to threaten their lives like an electrical collar or such wasn't any different than using the AP bracelet. Those willing to die before signing the contract would also not hesitate to get themselves killed by betraying their owners. Thus, AP bracelets and the queen were the best of the best when it comes to those immoral matters. There was also a good advantage of using the slave contract. That was secrecy. No one would know if someone was a slave or not since he would be wearing just an AP bracelet like everyone else. If he was ordered to lie about his slavery, he was bound by the contract to do so. This would leave anyone wondering if the person they were speaking to was a man of his own or just a slave. That's quite sickening actually. The fact that people could get enslaved to keep their lives but no one would ever know about it or try to help them out of their plight, besides the queen who could only send an emergency protocol at the first time. She couldn't do it anymore when someone signs the contract as it makes them property without rights. This was quite ironic as everyone assumes that with the advancement of technology those immoral issues would be destroyed once and for all. But in reality, they just got even more prevalent. In this current era, slaves, or queen's servants as they were referred to by anti-slavery activists in the UVR, had been already embraced by the majority whether they liked it or not and became a part of the universal society. Just like them, Felix also was forced to embrace it after being in contact with the UVR for more than 20 years in his previous life. He felt disgusted by it at the start, but year after year of seeing his clanmates taking with them their queen's servants to missions and surviving only due to them, Felix stopped going against the stream. If even the SG Alliance didn't want to stop slavery by simply adding a new rule forbidding slavery contracts, why would Felix keep rejecting it when it was going to stay when he was alive and after his death? Right now, he was merely spectating indifferently those bidders fight tooth and nail to buy that winter wolf boy. He had no intentions of joining the fun as he wasn't interested in raising that kid. He wanted useful servants and that kid still needed years of effort and resources to turn him into the killing machine his race was known for. Plus, it was too high profile to own him as Felix couldn't just keep him hidden in his bass.e.m.e.nt or something. Lastly, any race besides humans couldn't really utilize the bloodline system since they had their own paths of cultivation and systems. Felix wanted human servants for those two reasons. Bam! In the end, the queen struck the gavel after calling for the third time and no one seemed willing to raise the price. It was a steep price even for Felix who had 20 billion in his pockets. 8 billion for a winter wolf kid. Felix sweated a little bit, hopefully, peak fourth stage bloodliners would remain under 5 billion just like I read online. Chapter 366 buying two fourth-stage bloodliners. After the Winter Wolf Boy got auctioned successfully, a couple more servants followed after him. Most of them were from different races, which weren't really that high up in the SG Alliance power-slash-authority tree. If they were to be placed, they would at most have a tiny branch just like the human race. Naturally, those races in the ruling power would not be sold in any public auction like this since it would offend the race they belonged to. Those races at the top like the witch race, dwarf race, etc., always had fewer numbers but they were more united than ever unlike the human race and others. They couldn't accept that one of their own people was enslaved by a lesser alliance member. 
hence, each of them had created over the years countermeasures against the slavery contract and those who kidnapped one of their kin. Just like the spaceworm race who created the lifelong contract to give their juniors backing whenever they were doing their deliveries or just playing around in space by opening up random wormholes. Therefore, if one planned on kidnapping a dwarf or a witch, they better make it impossible to find them. If they were going to auction them, it would be done in black market auctions, not this one. Meanwhile, no one would give a shit if a human got kidnapped unless he was famous or had a noteworthy figure or background backing him up. Unsurprisingly, most races were just like humans in this case, making it possible to kidnap them and force them into a slave contract just to be sold later on. Just like what was happening for the past hour since the moment Felix had stepped foot in this auction. A slave after another kept passing by Felix's numbed expression as he was merely waiting for a good bid to appear. So far, there were many third stages or fourth stage bloodliners that had been sold. But Felix didn't like their details. Some of them had high profiled mutations while others were still resisting the notion of being a slave. Which was totally within their rights but Felix didn't want to buy trouble. He already had enough troubles and wanted loyal subordinates to help him deal with a few issues like the Gamma organization situation. He didn't want to lie by comforting them that they would be freed from the contract if they worked hard enough. Felix had no intentions of releasing anyone exposed to his secrets unless he got strong enough to not give a shit about his secrets being exposed. Hence, his servants shouldn't be mentally unstable but those who were willing to serve him. He believed that would take work to really deserve their loyalty instead of being forced upon them, but, Felix was ready to go all out on gearing them up and making them part of his inner circle. That wasn't the only reason he kept rejecting each auction servant but also due to their elements. Felix hoped to get one with a common element so it wouldn't be expensive as hell to gather the primogenitor's essences. Thankfully, he wasn't left waiting for long as the next servant that the queen had brought was to Felix's liking. He was a well-toned man with two long white feathers attached on top of his smooth bald head. That's as much as Felix managed to see since his face was censored. Naturally, the auction would either use this or give them a random face to hide their identity. Even the details didn't have their full name or exactly their background so both the auction and the buyer would avoid trouble if there were authoritative figures looking for them. Not bad an epic peak fourth stage bloodliner with the primary element being wind. Felix was reading off his details while glancing once in a while in his direction. His background is clean and he never exhibited any worrisome actions. Felix closed off the details hologram and focused on the starting bid that was written in the window, 700 million one hour later. Felix was cleaning himself up by changing into new clothes. He had already successfully won a bid on another epic peak fourth stage bloodliner by paying 5.1 billion for her. This brought down his leftover capital to 15 billion SC. Currently, he was preparing himself to meet them both in his room and see up close if his bids were worth it or not. Queen, please them send in. He requested. Immediately after he said so, light particles started to gather in the open space next to his seat. The room was bigger than usual just for this reason as the auction had taken into consideration that the bidders would want to check their winning bids. After a moment, the light had gone away leaving behind him the bald man with two white feathers on top of his head and a woman. She was quite a sensational woman as her hair was orange like the sun being seen from afar and remarkably long, reaching down to her kneecap. She had a well-proportioned body, appearing like she was taking good care of herself. Meanwhile. Her face would have appeared even more gorgeous if she wasn't staring coldly at Felix with clear hostility, unlike the other dude who was checking the place like he was on a vacation. Both of them were using their real faces and bodies since they were in the presence of Felix. Hello. Felix greeted with the warmest smile that he could muster. After all, no need to be all bossy from the start and create a separating bridge that would never be crossed. Hello. The man greeted back coolly but the woman didn't even bother to nod her head at Felix. She merely kept staring at him like he killed her parents or something. Felix didn't mind how she was looking at him as he believed that he would also react like that if he was ever in her situation. Heck, 
the dude's carefree manner was actually even weirder than the woman's silence. Can you please introduce yourselves? Felix requested. He already read their details and knew about their names and such, but he still wanted a proper face-off introduction. As expected, the man didn't voice any complaint as he started introducing himself, I am Eric Bogus, an epic peak fourth stage bloodliner. I have two elements wind and magma but I never bothered to integrate with a magma element beast since the element affinity rating is pretty low, what else? Eric paused and started pondering for a couple of seconds before continuing, Oh, my current bloodline is from the fierce Atlanta pheasant. He stopped to ask, Do you want to know about the rest of the bloodlines that I used and such? Felix shook his head and stated with a contentful tone, No, that was perfect. Let's leave the rest for later. Got you. Eric winked at Felix, making him roll his eyes speechlessly. He started to doubt the validity of the Queen's information as Eric was starting to appear like he was a bit retarded. Sigh, at least she appears normal. Felix thought while looking at the silent woman who didn't seem like she had any intentions to share a single thing about herself. Felix waited for a while, giving the woman all the time she needed to respond. Alas, she still seemed reclined to speak. At least your name. Felix showed a tight-lipped smile as he looked at her. The woman traded eye contact with him for a couple of seconds in silence until Felix started to lose faith. This will take more time than antic iPad. Just as Felix wanted to sigh in dejection, the woman said coldly, Malik Sol Oreo. Then, she went quiet again. But, Felix was still satisfied by hearing her voice as that made him feel like she wasn't a helpless cause that might take months just to approach. Now, let's get into the sticky question. Felix thought solemnly, hopefully, they wouldn't react excessively. Chapter 367, Eric Bogus May I know how both of you ended up in this situation? Felix sugarcoated his question as much as possible. He understood that anyone signing a slave contract seldom came without a shitty experience that was too hard to recall. By asking them this, he was doing nothing but opening up their wounds. As expected, Malik expressions turned nasty instantly. She didn't seem like she was targeting Felix with her look. Well, she ain't answering that. Felix shook his head lightly after seeing her reaction. When he turned to Eric, Felix saw that he was being given a look meant for morons. Before Felix could feel baffled by that look, Eric said with a casual tone, obviously because we signed a recruitment contract. A desolate silence had descended in the room as both Felix and Malik felt like their brain had short-circuited. They kept staring with a dumbstruck expression at Eric, making him feel a bit weirded out. Why are you looking at me like that? Abashed. Eric scratched his nose and said, I am getting embarrassed. This can't be right. Felix shook his head and fired off multiple questions at once, you are joking right? About the recruitment contract? You do realize that you signed a slave contract? Right. Slave contract? What are you talking about boss? Baffled, Eric snapped his finger and displayed a holographic contract. He pointed his finger at the title and said, See? It says recruitment contract. Neither Felix nor Malik knew how to react after reading the title. It wasn't because it was written recruitment instead of slave contract, but because of Eric's sincere bewilderment about the situation. They knew that all slave contracts never actually have a title that said slave contract. It could be recruitment, servant, subordinate, lackey, etc. Anything but the term slave since it would be the same as adding salt to injury. Yet, this idiot truly appeared like he didn't know about it. Please don't tell me he got cheated to sign it. No one can be that stupid. Don't even mention a fourth stage bloodliner like him. Felix massaged his temples with his eyes closed shut. After regaining control of his wits, Felix opened his eyes and asked with a soothing tone. Can you tell me exactly what happened when you were about to sign the contract? Did anyone force you or something like that? No one has forced me to sign it. Eric continued with an appreciative tone, 
during my great escape in the universe, I have run out of food, water, and I didn't know exactly how to get some. Oh no Felix could already see that his narration would end horribly but he still didn't interrupt him. Thankfully, I wasn't left starving for long as I have luckily met with a bunch of gentlemen in space. He praised sincerely, they treated me like their close friend after I explained my situation to them. They fed me and took great care of me. They were the ones who told me about this easy way to earn coins so I can support myself. You mean they made you sign the recruitment contract? Malik inquired, not able to stay silent at his messed up narration. No no no. Eric shook his extended arms and clarified, they merely told me about it and I requested to sign it since I didn't know any other method to earn coins. Felix took a deep breath, trying to suppress himself from shouting at this retard. He had so many questions and the most important one was, did you read the terms of the contract carefully? Like really carefully? Of course. Eric replied firmly like it was only natural to do so. Felix's lips trembled as he asked again, You have read that betraying, attempting to kill, retaliating, and disobeying the orders of your recruiter would get you either punished or killed based on the wishes of the recruiter and the contract terms. Yes. Eric quickly nodded his head, appearing quite comical with those two feathers flailing around. Yet, neither Felix nor Malik found anything funny about his agreement. They only felt wonderment while gaping at Eric appearing like they were admiring an exotic creature. Why are you looking at me like that again? Eric tilted his head and said, isn't that term normal? After all, I will be recruited and it is only logical that I will be punished or killed if I betrayed my boss. He added smartly while pointing his finger at highlighted term, plus, I know that my boss can't order me to kill myself or do anything that is against my beliefs, morals, dignity, etc. He shrugged his shoulders, so, as long as I stay loyal to my boss and respect the terms of the contract, I will be paid 2 million SC per month and I will have nothing to worry about. So why are you referring to this contract as slave contract? Eric looked at them in utter confusion, those fine gentlemen that saved my life also had signed it with their captain and they looked like they were enjoying their life in their spaceship. After hearing all of this, both Felix and Malik were left stumped by his logic that seemed correct but it was still flawed big time. They knew that everything he had said was indeed correct and within the contract terms. After all, slave contract came in many varieties. There were extreme contracts that robbed the signer of every basic right that he had. If the owner ordered him to kill himself, the slave must obey or the queen would pop his consciousness. Naturally, only a fraction of people signs this contract that was worse than death itself. As for the majority, they all sign a contract that ensures what Eric had mentioned above. That's why Felix wanted to create a boss and subordinate relation instead of a master and slave relationship. He might be slightly narcissistic and proud but he wanted none of that shit of feeling superior to another person. On the other hand, there were temporary contracts that had a lifespan. It could be 10 years or even 10,000 years of service before the slave gets released from his slavery chains. Then, there were permanent contracts that could never be broken unless the owner died or he broke the contract from his side. Currently, Eric and Malik had signed a permanent contract with a monthly payment of 2 million SC, unlike the temporary contract that didn't offer anything in return. So in a sense, Eric truly had signed a recruitment contract since he wasn't forced to do it. He probably got cheated but not forced. Meanwhile, Malik was most likely threatened with either her life to sign it or by another matter. Whatever it was, she clearly didn't seem to enjoy her situation, unlike Eric. You have no problems with being my subordinate for life. Felix asked. As long as we are going to do some fun stuff. Eric said with a foolish grin. Have fun. Malik said, excuse me but how old are you? I am turning 20 this year. Eric replied casually. Then how could you be ignorant about so many matters? Malik exclaimed in disbelief. Felix didn't show much of a reaction as he already saw his age in the profile details. But, just like Malik, 
he was quite surprised that a 20 years old man was completely out of touch with the UVR and the universe. After all, he referred to pirates as gentlemen, not knowing that he got played into signing the contract and sold in this auction or the party who placed him here. Whatever it was, they had earned 4.8 billion out of him without his knowledge or probably he knew that he was going to get auctioned after being lied to again. After all, the pirates could simply fool him into believing that he was being auctioned due to his talents, strength, or some bullshit. Based on Eric's naivety or stupidity, he would most likely believe it. This what both Felix and Malik concluded after piecing the dots. However, there were still many inquirers that were eating their brain out. Like Eric's ignorance about making coins in the UVR, obtaining coordination to a populated planet so he could resupply, not knowing that he was actually signing slave contract, etc. Such basic knowledge was known to even eight years child. Don't even mention Eric. Why do you think I escaped my family? Eric complained, my mom kept me locked up in my palace since the moment I was born. Even when I leave it I get accompanied by her and no one dares to talk to me or look at me when they see her. Isn't that taking sheltering to the extreme? Felix's eyelids twitched after understanding the source of Eric's lack of knowledge. How about the UVR? Malik asked, weren't you given access to it? I did have it. Eric admitted sadly, but, I never realized that it was this big with multiple cities and such since my access was limited by mom to only enter my UVR room. He chuckled in nostalgia, though, it was quite fun playing in it since it had all the games that I wanted to play. Denying even access to the public UVR. Felix frowned his eyebrows, was that really his mom or he was kidnapped and imprisoned? In Felix's eyes, locking someone's up in fear of having him killed or kidnapped was a horrible thing to do but understandable. However, denying even access to the UVR and making him only enter his UVR room? That's too extreme since it would serve no benefits. Heck it would do more harm since the UVR was a safe spot to learn about the universe and its cruelty to idiots and naive people. If his mother was anxious about him that much, she could simply teach him about the dos and don'ts in the UVR to avoid having him cheated into signing a disadvantageous contract and scammed. So Felix was truly bewildered about his backstory. Was that his birth mother or not? What family does he belong to? Is it a normal one or a behemoth that needed to worry about? Questions like those coursed in Felix's mind and he wasn't planning to add Eric into his inner circle unless he got a clearer vision. Chapter 368, Getting a Bit Closer If Eric's background turned out to be what wasn't written in the details, Felix had the right to send him back and get the money he lost. He wouldn't hesitate to do so since he had no intentions to buy extra trouble. Eric. Can you tell me more about your family, especially your mother? Felix requested while resting his chin on his hand. Well, my family isn't really that big as there is only my mom, aunt, uncle, and me. Eric carried on with a leveled tone, we own a planet and a couple of deserted planets near it for mining purposes. As for my mom, cough. How can I say this? She is quite overprotective when it concerns me. Maybe because I am her only child. He said while scratching his nose. So far everything is matching with the details written beside his mom. She was never mentioned in the details. Felix nodded his head in approval and inquired, How about the Empire? Is your family really in the Bardo Empire? Yes. Eric nodded his head. Good. Although Felix knew that the Bardo Empire was at a higher level of advancement and strength compared to the waned Mariana Empire, he still preferred having Eric's and Malik's background be as far as possible from him. The Bardo Empire was nowhere near the Mariana Empire as they were on the opposite sides of the galaxy. One last question. Felix narrowed his eyes and asked, Does your family have an Origin Realm bloodliner? As far as I know, my family is focusing on the business side and not the bloodline side. Eric answered truthfully. Phew, had me worried for a second. Felix believed every word mentioned since the moment he recruited them and got their contracts, they were not allowed to lie to him. Well, 
they could totally lie but the queen would notice this and inform Felix about it. Then, he would have the right to punish them as he saw fit but within the contract constraints. He couldn't just kill them after they told a single lie but he could totally do so if they exhibited any signs of ill intentions towards him or planned to betray him. With the queen's existence who was supervising every thought they had, he would get straight away notified if any of the above occurred. In case they attempted to make a move and backstab him, the queen wouldn't hesitate to pop their consciousness before they took even a single step towards Felix. When it comes to killing, the queen was the fastest executioner in the entire universe without a single contender. With that being said, Felix got quite muddled. Since so far everything that Eric had mentioned was written properly. Even other details were written but not mentioned by him, like his favorite food, what he liked and hated, his bottom line that shouldn't be crossed, etc. Details that could help Felix stay in favor with Eric without any issues arising between them. Queen, please run a quick search on the Bogus family in the Bardo Empire. Felix requested while smiling faintly at Eric. In a split second, the Queen reported her finding which was just the detailed version of what Eric had mentioned. Like the name of their planet, mines, industries, culture, etc. Felix spent two minutes listening to the Queen's report while asking Eric at the same time to confirm it. In the end, everything turned out to be clean and Felix couldn't help but sigh in relief. He understood that by owning those two, he would be targeted by their families, backgrounds, friends, masters, and anyone close enough to care about their disappearance. Whether it was Malak, Eric, or another recruit. The only difference would be the intensity of the search based on the background's resources. Hence, it was a must to have slaves with families like Eric to avoid bringing more trouble. Naturally, those slaves couldn't share information about themselves or contact their families when they logged into the UVR. The moment they did so without the owner's knowledge, they would straightaway get killed by the queen since it would be deemed as a betrayal. Felix knew about all of this since he wasn't a retard to get himself two slaves without knowing how the slave system works and its contracts. You said that your mom is overprotective. Felix coughed, I don't want to get into your family matters but don't you think that your mom would be searching for you everywhere? Don't worry. Eric showed Felix a thump up and said with a confident tone, I have left a note behind, telling her to not look for me and that I will be fine on my own. Fine my ass. Both Malik and Felix felt the need to beat Eric up for his baseless confidence. The dude got cheated and sold the moment he stepped into the real universe yet still was clueless about it. What's worse, if he didn't get found out by the pirates he would have died from starvation. Sigh. I know that your mom f asterisk eat up when she locked you like that and I don't want to know why she did it. Felix smiled bitterly, but, you should treasure your mother's unconditional love as you will miss it only when it's gone. Felix might not show it but there wasn't a single day that had gone by without missing his parents dearly. Although he already let go of them since it was a long time since they died, he would trade anything in his possession just for another chance to meet them again. Thus. He understood where Eric was coming as being locked up for 20 years in a palace without even full UVR access would result in taking extreme action as he did. But, leaving a note behind wouldn't make his mother less heartbroken and worried about his absence. Felix didn't like that one bit. Whatever, I was planning to tell you about this when you make it to my place in real life, but it wouldn't hurt to tell you now. Felix looked at them solemnly and promised, if you showed me that you are willing to serve me full-heartedly, I will not hesitate to modify the contract to allow you to contact your families and loved ones. Felix added lastly, I want you to feel like you are working for me as subordinates and being paid monthly. Hence, if you stayed loyal to me, you will never be treated as a slave or even think of yourselves like that. That goes without saying boss. Eric didn't seem like he understood the implication of Felix's offer as he merely thumped his chest twice in agreement. On the other hand, Malik's eyes widened in shock and agitation as she had never expected to receive this offer. When she signed the contract, she always believed that she wouldn't see her family until her owner dies or breaks the contract. Yet, she still signed it since at least there would be a chance to meet them again unlike getting killed straight away. Now, 
hearing what Felix had mentioned and seeing his sincere eyes as he looked at them, she sensed that he meant every word he said. What do you mean by modification and when are you going to keep your promise? Malik fired off two questions while trying to suppress her agitation. Naturally, I can't allow you to see and talk to your families freely since they will definitely ask you about your location. Felix said calmly, so, I will make sure to modify it to discourage you from any attempt to pull any tricks. As for the date. Felix shook his head and replied, that depends on your attitude, behavior, loyalty, obedience, all in all, give me a reason to reward you and I will most definitely do so. Malik closed her eyes and went quiet for a second after hearing so. Meanwhile, Eric merely kept making grand promises that Felix doubted he could even achieve one of them with his naivety. After a couple of seconds, Malik opened her crimson eyes and entered a staring contest with Felix, wanting to see if he showed any signs of deception or trickery. When she didn't notice any smidgen of fakeness, she nodded her head willingly and said, If I can see my family again, I will do my utmost best to support you in your journey, you have my word. Felix smiled widely after hearing so and said, That's exactly what I am hoping for. Just as Felix planned on excusing them, he remembered that Malik still hasn't introduced her background. Eric left him traumatized about trusting details fully as they could be deceiving. Hence, he swiftly asked her if what was written in the details was real or not. Malik nodded her head in agreement and added a couple of details that weren't included. First of all, she was a fire elementalist with a high affinity rating of 74%. But she didn't have a secondary element. Honestly, it was useless having a secondary element if the affinity rating wasn't going to be as high as the primary element. Meanwhile, her story was the same as Eric's but also different. While Eric had met with pirates and was exposed to their fake friendliness, Malik had faced the vicious side that they were infamous for. She told Felix that she was traveling with a few clanmates towards a tier 1 ancient ruins that had been discovered and they were sent to scout the situation. However, before reaching the ruins, they were intercepted by a pirate group who seemed like they were camping there specifically for them. Malik figured as much since the pirates weren't weak in the slightest. The crew had tens of peak 4th stage bloodliners while their captain was a peak 5th stage bloodliner. Her squad didn't have a single chance of winning as the moment the pirates entered their spaceship after destroying its thrusters and engines, a massacre had unfolded. It ended only when less than five of them survived. They were offered either an agonizing death or to sign the slave contract. It was clear what was Malik's choice. Chapter 369 Grandfather's Difficulties Sigh, one should never trust a ruin's coordination even if it was bought from secure channels. Felix shook his head at Malik's story. He understood that in this universe most coordinations shared in the UVR were either fake or traps set by pirates. Traps in the sense that those ruins were actually real and still unexplored. What those pirates do was simple. They sell the coordination to a targeted clan that was studied by them and then wait for them next to the planet, laying in ambush. Since the contract signed entailed that the ruins were real and unexplored, that clan wouldn't hesitate to send a squad to scout ahead for the main exploration crew. Felix's sold ancient ruins map were going to receive the same treatment since no one could trust that the ruins wouldn't be infested with pirates ready to jump on them. The pirates had to be creative in their approaches since just wandering around in the infinite cosmos wouldn't make them rich anytime soon. It wasn't easy to luck out on a spaceship on their radar. This method of laying down traps was quite a good one to earn coins since the caught hostages could be sold back to the clan for billions of coins and if the clan was unwilling to pay the ransom, they would be auctioned as slaves. Malik had told Felix that three of her clanmates had made the same decision as her. If they had the same integration level as her then it meant that the pirates had earned at minimum 20 billion SC out of them. When compared to the criminal organizations like Gamma that target weak planets, pirates were earning a shitload of coins in each operation they make. Naturally, the danger had increased significantly since no one knows if the trap was going to work out or just invite trouble. This was one of the reasons Felix wanted to build a loyal squad so when he aims at the unexplored ancient ruins in his memories, 
he would have some backup unlike going solo like a moron. Alright guys, you have shared more than enough and I am really appreciative of that. Felix smiled faintly, as much as I want to share things about myself, I can't do so unless we meet in reality, I hope you understand why. Malik nodded her head in understanding while Eric kept looking at them in confusion. Felix wasn't planning on explaining anything as time was of the essence. I will be paying for your journey. Felix informed, I need you to reach me as fast as possible, so I will be paying for the VIP Wormhole Expressway. Felix chose the VIP Wormhole Expressway since he knew that the regular expressway had a long queue before getting access. That's due to the space worm checking on those without permits by setting up stations in front of the Wormhole Expressway. After all, if the wormholes weren't watched properly, everyone could just use them wantonly without paying fees or having a permit. Naturally, most pirates weren't given permits to make it difficult for them in the universe. Meanwhile, the VIP Expressway only had space fleets guarding it. Since the moment one paid for VIP treatment, he would be given access straightway without stopping to get checked. This removed the queue time that might take up to days of a wait if one was unlucky and met with heavy traffic. Although they would be traveling at the best wormhole expressway, Felix knew that it would take them at least two months before they reach him. That's because planet Earth was isolated from the centers of civilizations in the Alexander Kingdom. They were positioned in the borders of the Alexander Kingdom and the Karania Kingdom. This implied that neither the wormhole expressway nor the VIP version was even close to them. In the case of deliveries, this wouldn't have created any problems for Felix since Fatty Badadai could simply open up a wormhole in his bedroom. However, for human transportation, the spaceship had to travel the entire distance from the center of the kingdom to Earth. With that being said, Felix wasn't bothered that much by waiting two months since his dark deviant spaceship was currently on its way and it would be arriving in a month and a half at best. It was a must to have it arrive before those two since Felix was planning on meeting up with them in it. He couldn't have them enter the Earthling team headquarters since the anti-surveillance barrier would detect them instantly. It wouldn't let them get inside without scanning them. That simply meant giving permission to the Queen to inform Mr. Rodriguez about their names, backgrounds, integration level, etc. Naturally, this process was only for outsiders since the ESG organization wasn't going to allow strangers inside without fully checking them out, unlike their known team members. Felix didn't want to expose Malik and Eric's strength lest they end up getting exposed to the Gamma organization. If all went well, Felix was planning on sending them to retrieve the pieces of the artificial symbiote after he makes his move against the Gamma organization's spaceship. After all, he wasn't a prophet to foresee that the Gamma organization was truly going to perish once and for all from his red plasma weapon. Those two would be his plan B when shit hit the fan and everything derail from the script in his mind. After Felix sent them away, he contacted the auction and gave them his address. He would be responsible for the payment but they would take care of the transportation for him. Felix didn't want Princess Bird snooping around him due to those sensitive discussions and information. Now that he was done, he sent her a message to accompany him to the last auction of the day. He wasn't planning to buy anything in it but he was willing to attend so he could broaden his horizons. Plus, he was left with only 15 billion SC and he wanted to save it for the biggest auction tomorrow. At that time, he would be accompanied by the anti-royal alliance and not just Princess Bird. I need to concoct some high-quality bullshit to throw them off. It will be even better if I managed to turn them into my allies. Felix rubbed his chin while gazing absent-mindedly in front of the auction's gate, waiting for Princess Bird's arrival. Good thing you are an expert in that. Asna chuckled. True. Felix laughed back and started brainstorming for tomorrow. Tomorrow evening, at the Androxa house, at 9 p.m. Felix was sitting in the living room all dressed up neatly appearing quite handsome. He was video chatting with his grandfather, listening to the difficulties his family company had run into in their main business venture. Naturally, his grandfather wasn't the one who called to whine about them but it was Felix who wanted to check on them. 
The millions of coins that he kept sending them discreetly were used properly to get themselves a small footing in the UVR. Naturally, they couldn't afford to create a company in Androxa City but they did manage to place it in the third biggest city in the Alexander Kingdom's UVR territory. Unsurprisingly, they started with the easiest industry and also one of the most profitable ones if it was done right. Cuisine They took advantage of Earthlings' diverse cuisine by implementing it in the UVR. Naturally, they couldn't just steal recipes and call them their own as they had to legally purchase them from the owners by paying them in dollars. That's why private clothes brands, recipes, patents and all for the data that was sold to the Queen wasn't placed by her in the VR store. She was simply buying the information to increase her database and also help new planets get a better footing. Hence, besides public information that was accessible to everyone, nothing else was posted by the Queen in the public database. Thankfully, it wasn't really that hard to get recipes from chefs since they couldn't really be copyrighted in the planet. But in the UVR? That was a different story. After those recipes became the family's property, they legalized it based on the UVR rules and it truly became theirs. In other words, unless one received permission or the Maxwells turned the recipe public, no one could use it in restaurants or sell it for profits. This was possible only due to the Queen AI. After they collected multiple recipes from every cultural cuisine, ranging from pizza recipes, pasta recipes, steak recipes, Costco's recipes etc., they had officially started a business by placing their food in VR store, cuisine section where Felix used to pick his food from. Naturally, there was an infinite number of different food in that section, making it almost impossible for their food to get some spotlight in the list unless it got picked constantly, turning it into one of the favorites in the section. But for their food to get purchased in the store they needed to be spotlighted first. Hence, the dilemma that the Maxwell elders and Felix's grandfather were facing. Sigh, we were quite naive when we believed that our earthling food will turn the UVR upside down due to their deliciousness. Robert said while rubbing his eyelids with a fatigued expression. He seemed like he wasn't having enough sleep or rest due to the family company hitting the roadblock in their path. I warned you before. Felix shrugged his shoulders, I told you that the cuisine's industry shouldn't be underestimated. It is indeed a fact that a single popular recipe could turn one into a multi-billionaire but that is just gambling with resources and hoping for luck to take the wheel. Felix indeed warned his grandfather by saying so. But in all honesty, Felix already foresaw that the earthling cuisine was going to fail hard into making an impact in the UVR. He had 20 years of future knowledge and not a single recipe had managed to leave a mark and raise above the trillions of different recipes. Those recipes were just for the human race without mentioning the other races. Frankly speaking, Felix always believed that Earthling's food would have made an impact if it was heavily advertised in the UVR. But who in his right mind would spend hundreds of millions to billions of coins to advertise a single recipe when they didn't even have half that amount as their capital? What's worse, the recipe could still fail to attract enough interest, thus killing off the investment. It was too risky to advertise a recipe. If one was willing to do so, he needed to study extensively the science of food in correlation with the majority of consumers in the UVR. If it wasn't for so, Felix would have chosen his grandfather and the elders' plan way before them. However, that didn't mean he wasn't investing in the food industry at all as his primo investment company was owning one restaurant and investing in one food company. Felix knew that down the line, the restaurant was going to create a heavenly recipe while the food company was going to invent a new cooking tool. So he might be dipping his feet in multiple industries but all of his projects were bound to succeed sooner or later. Sigh, we should have listened and switched to another industry. Robert sighed with a discouraged tone, now most of our capital had been invested in this company and we can't retreat anymore. Old geezer, are you giving up already? Felix taunted with a mocking tone, what happened to the prodigy businessmen who single-handedly turned the family into a business empire? Did you get overwhelmed by the business side of the UVR? Robert chortled softly in derision, don't I have you? If I failed to make money I can always live off you. I see your shame hasn't returned yet. 
Felix chuckled and said, Gramps, I told you many times to come to me for capital if you failed your projects. I don't care if you failed one or a hundred, I will always have your back. Felix bragged shamelessly, unlike you, my projects are bringing me more profit than I could handle. You are just as shameless as him. Asna rolled her eyes after hearing him bragging about his projects that he cheated with his future memories. Felix ignored Asna's jap and sighed after noticing that his grandfather's expression had gone strict all of sudden. Fine, fine, I won't say this again. Felix knew that his grandfather was too proud to ask money out of him. Although he joked about it, he would never actually live off Felix when he was healthy and vigorous just like his younger self. Chapter 370, The Annual CEO Hosted Galactic Auction How about I invest in your company then? Felix suggested, I can buy 20% shares in advance with 100 million SC. 100 million. Robert's eyes widened for a bit after hearing such a large number. He always knew that Felix was filthy rich but he never asked him about how much he was making or the names of his projects. Unless Felix came clean about them, he wouldn't stick his nose in his grandson's matters. In his eyes, he was already a man of his own. No, that's too much. Robert shook his head vehemently after regaining his senses, the company net worth is barely 30 million SC. True. Felix admitted it with a head nod. Then, he followed with a confident tone, but, I firmly believe that under your leadership, the company would earn more than that, and I will recover my capital in no time. VRRR VRRR. Before Robert could respond, Felix's bracelet started vibrating. Felix glanced at the screen and noticed that it was from the Maganda chief. Gramps, I will call you back later in the day. Felix swiftly added before hanging up, you can expect the money to be wired today. Good luck. Way. Clunk. Felix hung up and quickly turned off his phone and messages so he wouldn't be reached by anyone. Then, he requested, Queen, wire 100 million SC to my grandfather, oh, and wire addition 100 million SC. Tell him to bet on the Earthling team winning the first game. The queen asked for confirmation since the number was quite large. Felix confirmed it and the queen sent it immediately. After seeing the notification that marked the successful transfer, Felix chuckled to himself, he he, he must be fuming right now. VRRR VRRR. Better get going before they assume that I ditched them. Amused, Felix stopped thinking about matters concerning his grandfather after his bracelet vibrated again. He swiftly clicked on the small screen and noticed that it was truly an invitation to the chief's auction room. It simply said that he was eligible to accept it and join the final auction in the event. That's because Felix had spent more than 5 billion SC in the last six days and could automatically enter the final auction if he wanted to. However, he would have gotten a single room to himself and that wasn't proper when he had made an agreement to meet with the chief and the rest in a single room. Queen Please accept it. Felix requested after choosing a random disguise. Inside an enormous star-shaped building that had its endings supported by humongous floating boulders, thousands of authoritative individuals were spread out each in a room or multiple in a single one depending on their choice. What mattered most was that anyone attending this auction had spent five billion to earn their room. Heck, some of them spent it on items they didn't even need just to get a ticket inside. They understood that the items showcased here were the best of the best. If one couldn't obtain an invitation, he could always turn into a ghost and enjoy the show without the ability to access rooms. Inside one of those rooms, Felix's body was in the process of reconstruction. A second later, he opened his eyes and was met with the sight of the Maganda chief smiling gently towards him and the rest of the anti-royal alliance sitting each in a chair of their own. Not sensing a single ghost presence, Felix looked around him and noticed that Princess Bird wasn't in the room. I guess he didn't want her to hear the content of our conversation. Felix thought to himself while bowing his head respectfully towards the seniors, thank you for having me. Haha, <laughs> no need to be polite. The chief gestured for Felix to take a seat next to them. Felix nodded his head while seating himself right in the middle of them. 
There were six seats in the room placed horizontally and only one meter next to each other. The only seat left open was the one in the center, making Felix get sandwiched by the chief to his left and Zazia to his right. The rest were spread on both sides. Felix didn't know that the chair placement was meant to make him feel important or just to build pressure on him since he was literally being sandwiched by legendary peak sixth stage bloodliners. Whatever it was, Felix didn't show much of a reaction. In fact, he had placed one leg above the other, getting comfortable sitting within them like he was their equal. Why wouldn't he feel like that when he was always sharing a table with Isna and the J, Ramongandr? two beings whose statues were cosmos away compared to those seniors. It seems like you have enjoyed your time in the past six days. Zazia said calmly. Felix smiled politely and replied, Indeed, it was a fruitful six days all thanks to the chief. I am glad. The chief said while laughing in a heartful manner. However, the conversation he was having in his mind was nothing but that. As we decided, Zazia you will be the one who breaks the ice and start the conversation about his bloodlines. Understood. Zazia sent a message while having a forced faint smile like she was trying her best to not appear cold and indifferent. Gabrielle, stop staring at him like that, you are creeping me out, don't even mention him. Chief sent another message to the youthful man with a long white mustache that reached his chest. Truly. He was staring at Felix like he was his son-in-law, sending shivers down Felix's spine. However, after the warning, he coughed and regained control of his emotions. He was the man from the previous gathering who proposed to invite Felix into his palace to check out his daughters. He seemed like he still didn't give up on that thought even though he never received a response from Felix. Well, Felix didn't even see his email as he filtered only the auction ones before. Just as the mood was about to grow awkward since no one was speaking, the window in front of them started reflecting bright blue light. After a second, the blue light was replaced with a beautiful blonde woman who was wearing a long tight dress and moon-shaped earrings. She was standing in a circular stage while appearing as clear as crystal to everyone no matter their distance. She smiled charmingly and spoke with her arms spread apart in a welcoming manner. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to the annual CO hosted auction that was brought to you by Aquatic Auction House, Beethoven Auction House, Daylight Auction House, and lastly, Dragonair Auction House. Clap clap clap. Resounding applause replied back to her greeting, making her smile get even wider. After a short moment, it died down and she began speaking again, this might be your hundredth time attending this yearly CO hosted auction or it might be your first time. But as always, let's take a look at the auction's rules together since they are quite different than what you are used to. Felix listened carefully to what she had to say as he never attended this auction even in his previous life. He didn't find a lot of information about it after extensive research. The presenter manifested a hologram that had five rules written boldly in red color. After reading them in his mind, Felix noticed that he only knew one rule out of them. That was the fact that there were only ten auctioned items and they weren't known to any bidder. It was written that only the auction's owners who were CO hosting this knew about the items and they signed a contract to keep it to themselves. The second rule was simply stating that one must bid with a minimum of 500 million SC each time. The third rule was about the time allowed to make a bid. It had gotten increased from the usual 15 seconds to one minute, allowing the bidders more time to consider their bids. The fourth rule was also about time but it was related to the time allowed to read the details. They were given 10 minutes this time instead of the known 2 minutes. The fifth rule and the last rule implied that it wasn't allowed to place assets as collateral or asking for a loan from the auction. The only method accepted was hard cash. After the presenter read them out loud and explained each one briefly, she bowed her head with a beautiful smile and said, Enjoy your time bidding and good luck. Poof! She exploded into light particles, emptying the stage. However, it didn't stay like that for even a second as the holographic image of the queen had manifest in her place. Without nonsense, she brought out the first item, which appeared as a triangle-like white flask filled with black matter, and said, 
The first item is a flask of immortality concocted personally by Madame Sandra, a rank 5 witch. She paused for a second and followed after, the starting bid is 2 billion SC. You have 5 minutes to read its details and start bidding. Dear God, if this was the first item, then what the F asterisk CK are they going to auction as the last one? Shocked, Felix gulped a mouthful while staring at the flask and its mind-blowing details in the window. Yet, the five seniors didn't seem to care about his reaction as their entire focus was placed on the details as well. They appeared more agitated and shocked than Felix since this flask concerned them even more. Chapter 371, Bringing Out the Bloodline Subject Madame Sandra finally pulled it off again with her 2% success chance. Gabriel pounded the armchair with his palm in excitement and eagerness. You going for it again? The chief asked, Grand Elder still didn't find anything else to prolong his life. Gabriel sighed while shaking his head, unfortunately, he has only 10 years left to live and he had already given up on the search after gaining immunity from the longevity potions. I see, then I won't fight it out with you for it. The chief and the rest decided to give up on it for Gabriel. Meanwhile, Felix had just finished reading the drawbacks of the potion. He couldn't help but marvel at which Sandra for concocting such a heavenly potion. As far as he read, it provided the user with extra 10,000 years to live. It might not sound like a lot but the potion wasn't made for commoners only but could be used by even Origin Realm bloodliners who were at their last stretch of life. Potions that could extend the life of bloodliners were always rare and expensive as hell. Even hundreds of years were almost impossible to get for normal bloodliners, don't even mention the flask of immortality. Should I try to get it for Gramps? Felix pondered deeply, commoners could utmost extend their lives to 500 years with longevity potions meant for them. But this one could extend his life without drawbacks, unlike the lesser counterparts. Felix glanced at Gabrielle, who was coiling his mustache around his finger with an eager expression, and frowned his eyebrows, I doubt I can outbid him with my pitiful capital. Please start bidding. Felix's focus was brought back to the Queen after hearing so. Whatever, let's attempt it. Queen, please increase the bid to 4 billion SC. Alas, the Queen didn't even entertain him as the latest bid had already surpassed 5 billion in the blink of an eye. 6 billion from room 544. 8 billion from room 978. 16 billion from room 641. It didn't take even 10 seconds before the price surpassed Felix's entire capital and was still not showing any signs of stopping. Ha ha ha, how does it feel to be poor again? Asna didn't hesitate to throw jabs at the silent Felix whose ego was being brought down to the ground with each 2 billion plus bid. When he had 36 billion in his pocket, he always felt like he could buy anything that his eyes landed on since he never actually saw something getting sold with more than 20 billion SC. Naturally not including cosmic bodies, coordination, etc. Yet, seeing that the flask of immortality had reached 25 billion SC and still climbing fiercely, made him know that even if he didn't buy anything in the past six months, he doubted that he would get anything from this auction. He truly got his horizons broadened. The usual. Felix shook his head and smiled brightly again, I am used to the feeling of being a small fish anyway. Although Felix said so, he didn't show any signs of planning to remain one for a long time. He may not have reached a whale level but he would get there eventually if he kept doing his thing. In a short while. 45 billion from room 641. 45 billion from room 641, going once, twice, sold. Bang. In the end, the potion's price had finally halted at 45 billion, making Felix marvel at how much people were willing to pay to prolong their lives. Sigh, I am sorry it didn't work out. The chief patted Gabriel's shoulders, comforting him after he lost the bid. All of them did the best they could by loaning him coins to secure it. Even Felix shimmed in with 5 billion SC to show support, naturally, it was a contract-based loan and his private details were hidden from them by the Queen. Still, it wasn't enough. 
although they were kingdom's leaders with assets worth hundreds of billions sc, but when it came to liquidity, they truly didn't have much. No sane or smart king would keep holding into 100 billion sc in his pocket when it could be used to better their kingdoms, invest in research, upgrade their armies, etc. Everything revolved around their kingdom and holding 40 billion sc for personal matters was already too much. Since it was against the rules to place assets as collateral, Gabriel was left hopeless. Well, at least you raised the price until the other buyer would feel hurt by it for a long time. The chief tried to brighten the mood with a joke. After all, their main target from this auction was actually sitting right in the middle of them. Gabrielle wasn't required to be told twice as he swiftly switched gears back to being natural. When Zazia saw so, she glanced at Felix asked softly, Mr. Landlord, did you by any chance place a unique bloodline in this auction? The chief and the rest all held their breaths in anticipation of his answer. This question might seem like a normal yes or no type of question, but it had multiple layers to it that could decide many things based on Felix's response. So that's why they wanted me in this auction. Felix recognized their target instantly. He understood that the seniors didn't meet with him in any other auction since if he had auctioned his unique bloodline, it would straightaway be chosen as one of the ten best items to be auctioned in the entire event. After all, it was a mythical bloodline placed by Landlord himself. By meeting here, they had an actual way to bring the subject to light without appearing aggressive or demanding. The seniors thought of everything to make Felix feel like he was a friend of theirs invited to enjoy his time and not be interrogated, although that was indeed the case. They wished dearly for the answer to be yes since it would mean that it was possible to obtain Felix's bloodlines. They wanted just one bottle. Not for their use, but to be experimented on and researched. They wanted to reverse engineer what was done to the bloodline to make it always stronger than its counterparts. If they acquired that, Felix wouldn't even be needed anymore since they could create their own unique bloodlines. That what they were planning on and hoping to achieve. Alas, all of their wishes and hopes were dashed after Felix replied with a simple, nope. The chief and the rest all exhibited some signs of a disappointment for a split second before their expressions returned to normal. Why so? Zazia asked casually, I believe that you will earn at least 50 billion SC for one of them. Even if it was just a tier 1 bloodline. Simply because those bloodlines don't belong to me. Felix replied with a leveled tone like he was stating a matter of fact. The seniors went quiet for a second after finally receiving an indirect confirmation. Well, they didn't fully believe that it was the truth since they only have Felix's body language to guess if he lied or not. Since Felix didn't really lie as those bloodlines belonged to primogenitors, he didn't exhibit a single subtle subconscious sign of lying. The seniors could only somewhat believe what he said and move on. I don't know if I mentioned it before or not, but I have watched all of your games and was quite fascinated by your ability's uniqueness. Gabriel confessed, this made me appreciate the owners of your bloodlines and also intrigued about their research. Oh? Is that so? Felix asked, smiling. Haha, I am also quite curious. The chief said while laughing, trying to make the conversation stay on the casual side. The rest followed after him by voicing their desire to learn more about Felix's bloodline. Felix looked at them and replied with a light chuckle, I guess that makes six of us. Zazia arched her eyebrows in displeasure and asked, What do you mean? I am also curious about their research results and how they created those bloodlines. Felix shrugged his shoulders while admitting, Too bad, I have no clearance to such a sensitive intel. Haha. <laughs> How can it be like that? The chief laughed as he doubted, I mean, you are using their bloodlines right? So how can you not be an important asset? Important asset? Hey, you will be surprised if you hear what's my position in the organization. Felix chuckled faintly in ridicule. Organization? Is his position that low to mock himself? Again, I didn't see any signs of lying. Still. Take every word that he said with a grain of salt. 
The telepathic conversation between the seniors never stopped for even a second as they analyzed every word and action that came out of Felix. While they were assuming that he was meaning the organization, Felix was hinting at his universal social status compared to Asna and the J, Ramungandr. Hence, he truly didn't lie. Can you tell us more about your organization then? Zazia asked. Instead of answering, Felix rested his hand on his chin and remained silent. Is he thinking whether to tell us or not? He must have signed an NDA contract not to divulge information. I believe that he is considering what can he say without breaking the contract's terms. Agreed. It could only be so. While they were trading messages without a change of expression, Felix was rechecking on his bullshit story for any last loopholes before committing to it. After not noticing anything wrong with it, Felix removed his hand from his chin and looked at them with a solemn expression. For smart experienced individuals like you, I assume that you know that I have signed an NDA contract. The chief and the rest nodded their heads. But what you don't know is that immediately after saying anything that could expose the organization, the queen will pop my consciousness. Felix informed. Before the senior's expressions turned dark, Felix looked at the chief and said, but since the chief treated me like a close friend, I am willing to tread on a fine line to give non-sensitive information about my organization. Although the seniors were still not liking the sound of that as they knew that Felix was probably going to give some useless information that couldn't be taken advantage of, they remained silent and placed their entire focus on his words. Let's start by the grand purpose of my organization. Felix smiled faintly and said, it's to make the human race replace one of the ten ruling powers in the SG Alliance. Chapter 372, It Might Work or Not Silent engulfed the room after the last echo of Felix's bold and preposterous words resounded in the senior's ears. Is he talking for real? Ruling power. Hey, what a joke. Felix could see the disbelief and doubt that had emerged in their eyes after hearing him out. He didn't blame them for feeling like this as the purpose that he chose was truly impossible even if the entire race had united somehow and worked as one towards it. Yet, he just told them that an unknown single organization was attempting to do so. They didn't know if they should laugh at their unfold arrogance or applaud at their boldness. But, Felix didn't care how they see it since he only wanted the organization to appear like it was too otherworldly. Cough, Mr. Landlord. I mean no offense when I say that your organization's goal is truly on the point of insanity. Gabriel said. Even the chief, who always seemed optimistic, was nodding his head in agreement. Felix spread out his arms in a carefree manner and replied, It's not like I support it or have a say in the organization's decision making. What do you do exactly? Zazia asked with her eyebrows frowned. My job in the organization is pretty simple and anyone can do it actually. Felix scratched his cheek and continued bullshitting with a straight face, I am experimenting with bloodlines given to me in the game so they would obtain data off it. Experimenting. Thoughtful, the chief rubbed his chin while trading glances with his allies. It does sound logical. But, if they wanted to test and get data why not do it hiddenly without needing to expose the bloodlines in the first place? Ask him. After a quick telepathic conversation between them, Gabrielle was left to ask Felix, don't you think that it's much better to carry out experiments hiddenly? They already did so. Felix pointed at himself and clarified, I am the final experiment and was meant to compete against the strongest fighters in the entire SG platform to see how the newer bloodlines fare against the rest. The chief and the rest traded glances again, making Felix wonder what they were thinking about his bullshit so far. Were they buying it or not? Honestly, he doubts that they wouldn't buy it since they had no other option but to. Unless they got to him in real life and extracted information forcefully from him by reading his memories or using some f asterisk eat up item, anything that he said was the truth and nothing but the truth. What's the final goal from your experiment? Zazia rephrased her question after realizing that it didn't make sense, when will the experiment end? Did they give a rank set in mind? Or after they finished gathering all the data they required? 
it will end when I reach the origin realm while using from awakening to sixth stage of replacement, nothing but mythical bloodlines. Felix dropped a bombshell on them while hearing Asna's enticing laughter. She seemed like she was enjoying the show, unlike the seniors who were left utterly dumbfounded after hearing Felix naming his bloodline. Mythical bloodlines. Stirred and excited, the chief exclaimed loudly while standing up on his feet. His brain got shut down the moment he heard the mythical term, not processing the rest of the sentence. It was an understandable behavior for someone obsessed with new bloodlines to place in his collection. Easy now chief. Zoja's eyelids twitched as she sent a message, you are starting to drool in front of him. The chief hastily wiped it out with his sleeve in a single motion while returning to his seat. He looked at Felix and noticed that he was looking at him weirdly. However, he didn't even explain himself as he straightaway asked solemnly, was it you who named the bloodlines after seeing everyone calling you mythical bloodliner or the organization? Naturally it was me. Felix didn't lie this time as he clarified, the organization was using a shitty numbered name for the bloodlines and I think it's much better to call it mythical bloodlines. He did lie partially but it was a must. He wanted to make them know that the organization was responsible for everything and that he was utterly useless without the ability even to name a bloodline. He knew that he could have gone full ham in his lie by mentioning that bloodlines were named mythical way before it got spread in the network. But in his eyes, that was a breach of the NDA contract. Because he was telling them the actual name used by the organization. Names were banned based on the contract terms. Like the organization's name, the researcher's name, staff's names, etc. Hence, the reason he mentioned shitty numbered name on the fly. Felix always needed to be on his tiptoes against those monsters who lived for probably thousands of years. Mistakes like those were too fatal to his story and would expose him in a heartbeat. Felix wanted to avoid that since he had plans to take advantage of them by relying on the fake organization. Not official, hey, that's unfortunate. The chief was slightly disappointed by the sound of that. After seeing that the chief stopped bothering Felix with the rank, Zazia swiftly too over by requesting Felix to clarify what he meant by reaching Origin Realm. I guess that should be enough fake information. Too much and loopholes will start to manifest on my story. Felix made an instantaneous decision after seeing that they were getting too comfortable with their questioning. I don't mind sharing it. Well, only by reaching that reel. Felix stopped speaking midway and kept staring into the void while trembling in his seat. This sight confused everyone but Zazia who guessed what happened to Felix due to prior experience and sharpness. Shit, he must have received a warning from the Queen after starting to mention something vital about the organization. Damn it, I was wondering why does it seem familiar. The seniors all exclaimed one by one in their minds in agitation and worry. They understood that to receive a warning meant that Felix wasn't going to speak a single word about the organization lest he ends up getting killed straight away. Just as they expected, Felix looked at them with a bitter smile and said, Sorry, but I can't share much. I have been given my first strike by the Queen. The chief and the rest signed in dejection and disappointment after hearing so. There were a lot of questions in their minds that needed to be answered. Naming a few, why was Felix the only one chosen to experiment in the games? What's the background of this organization and where did it come from? Felix's information might sound good, but he didn't mention anything concrete that was usable by them. We don't know if he is faking everything or he truly meant every word due to the chief. Whatever it was, we need to contact the organization backing him up and speak to them personally. Zazia sent a message while showcasing a gentle smile towards Felix, appearing like she was comforting him. Agreed. We already have a head start than the rest and we need to take advantage of it. Chief, you deal with it. Leave it to me. The chief looked at Felix who appeared like he was pondering deeply. The chief patted his shoulder and told him, no need to squeeze your brain for more intel. We appreciate what you have shared with us so far. Are you sure? Felix insisted with a guilty tone, I feel like I didn't pay you enough for the invitation and hospitality. 
The chief pointed at his eagle logo in his chest and said, We have a saying in my tribe. If you spent a week with a person without troubles arising, you would become his friend, his partner, and his ally. Since you spent an entire week with my daughter and said that you enjoyed her company, that makes you a close friend of my family. The chief said with a sincere tone, so don't consider yourself as an outsider and keep feeling like you need to return a favor. Upon hearing all of this, Felix didn't know if he was being bullshitted or the chief was talking for real. However, he still bowed his head respectfully and said, I am honored chief to be a friend of the tribe. Felix smiled innocently and requested, Please feel free to ask if you require anything from me. Haha, <laughs> as a matter of fact, I do have a small favor. The chief rubbed his chin and requested, Can you contact your organization for us? Instead of responding, Felix leaned back on the chair while going completely silent. The chief and the rest didn't bother or rush him as they waited for a response while holding their breaths. They finally took the bite but I need them to feel unworthy for the organization. Felix thought. I don't mind at all. But please give me four days to prepare. Felix clarified with a troubled tone, I need to make sure that when I voice my request it will be taken seriously and delivered to the higher UPS. You never cease to amaze me with your acting and bullshit level. Asna chuckled while covering her glossy lips, you already reached a godly level. Thank you for the compliment. Felix replied while looking at the seniors nodding their heads at him. Please take all the time you need. Indeed, we are not in a rush. They accepted what Felix had said since they understood that in large organizations, small fry never gets taken seriously. In their mind, if everything that Felix had said was real, then his contact request would be ignored if it wasn't serious. They really hoped to meet with the organization as the anti-royal alliance plan depends on Felix's bloodlines. Meanwhile, Felix has done his very best to make himself appear smaller in their eyes since he knew that if he showed them that he had useful information and was hiding it, they would use everything in their possession to get to him in real life. That's only if he showed them that he got info about the bloodlines. Now imagine him selling or auctioning the primogenitor's bloodline. Indeed he would earn 40 billion SC or more from the cell but he would be exposing that those bloodlines provide users with 10 abilities instead of 6 like tier 1 to tier 7 bloodlines. What's worse, they could manage to awaken the primogenitor and know that Felix had been using the primogenitor's bloodlines instead of the made-up mythical bloodlines. He wasn't ready to receive that kind of attention and hunt that would most definitely move even the monsters hidden in the galaxy. Hence. Felix's bloodlines must not land in any human's hand unless they were loyal to him and would never release his secrets. Felix also knew that he could have used some bullshit lie like he had an origin realm bloodliner behind his back or such. However, he also understood that wouldn't really work since it would seem like he was attempting to scare them off actively. Felix didn't want to leave that impression since it would appear like he was afraid of them. It was a hundred times better when someone else brings the subject of those indirect threats. With the seniors getting baited to contact the organization, Felix would simply respond to them by using a fake high echelon member of the organization. This would lead them to put their focus on the organization instead of Felix in terms of contact. By then, he would have every opportunity to make them give up on trying to locate the useless member that he had built as landlord. This was merely the beginning of his plan. It might work or not, but he was willing to take a shot. Chapter 373, Leaving the Auction Early The moment that the conversation had died down, everyone's focus was brought back to the ongoing auction. Currently, three items were auctioned during their conversation, leaving seven more. Those last three items were just as good if not better than the Flask of Immortality. There was even a flying serpent, that resembled one of the dragon species, sold as a tamed mount for 29 billion SC. Naturally, it was probably going to be used for statue and reputation instead of transportation. Felix could only watch as those items flash past his eyes without any means to acquire one. The 15 billion in his pocket felt like 15 pennies in this auction. Absolutely useless and couldn't even help him raise the price three times despite others. Whatever, 
at least I have bought all the things I required for my integration and to further my plans. Felix comforted himself, plus, if I used all of my capital to buy an item here, I will be broken I can't have that now when I need to collect primogenitor essence for four bloodlines. Although it was an attempt to make himself feel less bad about missing out on those items, Felix was speaking the truth. One bloodline essence was already hard enough to collect, don't even mention another three added to the mix. F asterisk CK it, better get myself busy than continue staying here for no reason. Felix quickly decided to ditch the auction while it was still ongoing. Seniors, I apologize but I have to leave for an urgent matter. Felix said while tapping on his bracelet screen with a bitter smile. Oh? Is it the organization? Zazia asked in intrigue. Felix nodded his head and straightaway activated the teleportation process after seeing that no one was adding any more questions. Please do remember to take care of our matter properly. The chief reminded him with an easy-going smile. Leave it to me. Felix waved his hand while disintegrating and said his goodbyes. The moment he disappeared from the room, everyone's expression turned from friendly to solemn real quick. Let's carry on our conversation. Zazia said out loud. It seemed like they never stopped talking telepathically in the presence of Felix. As I said, we have to prepare for both situations. The chief informed, if we managed to get contact with the organization and found out that they were real, we will go all out to ally with them. If we found out that that lad is playing us. Zazia smiled coldly, we will hunt him down to the ends of the universe until we find out about his abnormality. Hopefully, he didn't lie. Gabriel sighed, four of those five suspects turned out to be not him, leaving only Aladdin Musk. If he also turned out to be not him, we will need to spend billions of coins and at least a year of effort to get some positive results unless Landlord gave us other clues. How's the situation with your target chief? Zazia inquired, is he still hiding? The chief clicked his tongue in irritation, I have been using all of my resources to locate him on his planet, but the environment is making it extremely difficult. Who would have guessed that everyone is living under the deserts? Barry smiled wryly. Don't think too much about this matter. The chief promised, I will catch him eventually. Hopefully he is going to be landlord. Zazia wished softly while looking at the auctioned. Meanwhile in Felix's Androxa house. He was sitting in the living room while having a hologram displaying all the acquired items and their serial codes underneath them. On another side, there was another hologram displaying a list of witches. Felix was checking it currently, wanting to see if there was any other witch besides Hala with a 49% success rate or above in concocting the elemental potion. After a thorough search, he managed to find three of them. They had a 70% success rate. Alas, they were all rank 5 witches and they rarely accept commissions for elemental potion. They were focusing more on concocting rank 5 potions like Flask of Immortality. Even if they accepted one, Felix would be required to wait at least a year for his turn in the queue to arrive. Then, pay triple the fees than what he paid to Witch Hala to make it worth a rank 5 witch. I guess it wouldn't hurt to commission it to Madame Hala again. Felix scrolled back up on the list and clicked on Madame Hala's profile. After a swift read, he noticed that her reviews had increased and that her queue was smaller than last time by a couple of orders. Felix went to the dial button and called her. Just like before, he was answered by Madame Hala's assistant. After a quick back and forth negotiation to reduce the price, a deal had been made. It was for Felix to pay the full amount of fees without reducing a single coin. Since he was using an uncommon elemental flower again, he had to pay 360 million SC for the concoction. Well, at least he would need to only wait 30 days this time for his turn to arrive, unlike last time. Miss, can I be notified before Madame Hala start the concoction? Felix requested, I am interested in watching the process of my potion concoction. Naturally. The assistant replied enthusiastically, you are more than welcome to watch. But, you will need to pay 2 million SC so Madame Hala could accept you around her. Understandable. 
Felix's eyes twitched but he still wired the extra fees on the original paid amount. 2 million SC was quite worth it to watch Live a Witch during concoction. Felix wanted to watch her previously on his last order but his bracelet was shit, not having the ghosting feature. With his new bracelet, he could ask for permission to show himself as a hologram in which Hala's concoction lab. After so, he excused himself and hung up. Let's check on that fatty. Felix murmured, he must have gained weight again after lazing for almost a month. Ring ring, cluck. Fatty, you dead yet? Felix inquired lazily. I will be soon if you don't give me a delivery. Fatty bought a die wind, I am about to starve. Ha, did you burn through all of your cash in a single month? Felix mused. Cough, something like that. Fatty replied with a held back tone. Felix got curious after realizing that he wasn't lying. But, he didn't want to get privy to his private matters just like Fatty was respecting his privacy as well. Hence, he changed the subject to the deliveries he needed to be brought back home. Don't worry about coins, I have multiple deliveries for you. Felix glanced at the list to his side and informed, I have three things in the SG Mariana Empire warehouse, and five more in the Guardian Empire. Ite. Send me the codes so I can calculate the shipment amount. Fatty called eagerly. Felix emailed them to him with a simple request from the Queen. After waiting for a couple of minutes, he received the price, greater than 10 million SC. Felix wasn't surprised by the number since he was making a cross empire's delivery and that was a long journey even for Badadai. Especially when it was from the Guardian Empire situated on the opposite side of the galaxy right next to the Bardo Empire. He was thankful enough about getting relieved from paying the custom taxes on those auctioned items. If it wasn't for so, he would have winded up with paying a minimum of 500 million SC just to get them to the Mariana Empire. Then pay again to get them to the Alexander Kingdom since it was separated from the Mariana Empire. By the time they reach him, his wallet would have beaten black and blue. When should I expect them? Felix inquired. Four days. That's good enough. Felix nodded his head in satisfaction and hung up after saying his goodbyes. He wired him the payment and closed the holograms. Then, he called Eric and Malik to check on their situation. After hearing that they were about to depart in a spaceship, Felix wished them good luck and told them to meet up with him in the Androxa Capitals Training Center tomorrow. Felix wanted to check on their combat up close since neither of them was an SG player. What's worse, Eric possibly didn't fight much in his life due to his mom. Based on his young age and high integration level, he must have been integrating non-stop with integration materials until he reached peak fourth stage of replacement. This implied that he rarely fought with his abilities since he replaced them the moment he gets them. Thankfully, he still had his edged permanent abilities making it possible to just integrate to the peak fourth stage of replacement then start practicing combat with them. This integration method was more prevalent in rich families who were able to buy epic or legendary bloodlines from tier 1 to tier 7. After all, no one would want to waste his future by using rare bloodlines or below unless he was retarded to rush it or truly hopeless for a way to get them. Honestly, with the existence of the SG, there was always hope to secure those high-end resources. Anyhow, Eric was probably integrating with this method. Felix didn't know if it was his mother's choice or not, but he didn't care much as he would carry on using this method for both of them. That's because he wanted them to reach peak fifth stage of replacement as fast as possible so he could turn them into primogenitors bloodliners. I need to buy some epic tier 5 bloodline bottles for wind and fire element. Felix rubbed his temples after remembering this only now. He knew that it was better to buy them now and send the serial codes to Badadai so he could bring everything at once. But first, he needed to know about the species of the fire primogenitor and the wind primogenitor. Elder, do you know the species of the fire primogenitor and wind primogenitor? Felix asked politely. Chapter 374, The Fire Primogenitor and the Wind Primogenitor Hmm. 
I have met with the fire primogenitor once and she was from the bird species. Thoughtful, the J. Ramunganda rubbed his purple goatee while trying to recall those old memories. Oh? Wait, let me enter the consciousness space so I can see her. Felix closed his eyes quickly after he received a positive confirmation. In a short while, Felix grouped up with the J, Ramungandra and Asna who were chilling in a mist-made beach. The sand was grey, the water was grey, everything was grey making Felix feel gloomy just by the sight of them. The J, Ramungandra and Asna were holding two soft grey drinks while lying on beach chairs. Felix frowned his eyebrows and thought, if only there was a way to connect them to the UVR, it would be much better to have them hanging there with me. Felix thought about this issue the moment Asna entered his consciousness. Alas, he didn't find a method to help Asna connect her consciousness with the Queen. After all, to connect with the Queen, an AP bracelet was a must. The one he was wearing was already bound to his consciousness only. This meant the Queen never actually knew about the existence of Asna or the J, Ramungandr. She could hear Felix speak but not them since they weren't connected to her. This made it seem like Felix was talking to himself like a retard always. The queen in his bracelet was just a basic version meant to assist him so she never thought too deeply about matters not concerning the rules. Felix even attempted before to request the queen to log Asna in the UVR but she simply told him she didn't know what he was talking about and gave him the protocol to log into the UVR. Since the protocol required an AP bracelet, Felix was left stumped. Don't mind us. The J, Ramungandra smiled gently after hearing his thoughts, we are enjoying our time as it is. Don't lump me with you, old snake. Asna removed her sunglasses and glared at the J, Ramungandra. I want to leave this shitty place. If you spent less time whining and more time thinking, you could have found a method to connect to the UVR. Annoyed, Felix scolded while taking a seat next to her. Asna went gloomy after hearing so. Felix raised his eyebrows in confusion at her reaction. He didn't know what came up to her to react like that instead of cursing him back. But, seeing that she just wore her sunglasses back and stopped talking at once, Felix didn't continue pondering on the matter. If she didn't want to talk then he wouldn't force her. Elder, can you please show me the fire primogenitor? Felix asked while leaning closer to the J, Ramungandra. The J. Ramungandra waved his hand lazily and a darkened mirror-like screen was manifested in front of Felix. A second later, it brightened up and displayed the fire primogenitor. SSSSS. Felix couldn't help but drew a deep breath after seeing an image of a cosmic swan-like bird nesting on an active red star that was probably a million times bigger than the sun. Felix barely noticed her at the start since her entire body was burning, making her appear like she was made from fire. Seeing his shock, the J, Ramungandra chuckled and said, she is called Phoenix and her few worshippers refer to her as the Star Goddess. The Star Goddess? It fit perfectly. Felix praised with a slight head nod. The J, Ramungandra laughed in mockery, that's just a glorified title for a lazy head like her. What do you mean? Felix wondered. She spends 90% of her time sleeping on a star since it's warm and cozy. The J, Ramungandra smiled wryly, she was one of the few primogenitors who missed the packed meeting as she forgot to wake up for it. For real. Felix was left speechless by the sound of that. He didn't think that even primogenitors could sleep over important matters. Suddenly, his eyes widened in shock after rethinking what the J, Ramungandra had mentioned. Does that mean she is still alive to this day? The J, Ramungandra lifted his sunglasses just to give him a side glance meant for morons. This made Felix feel embarrassed as he didn't know what did he say wrong. I just told you that she spends 90% of her time asleep. The J, Ramungandra wore back his glasses and said, why would she get depressed like us and seek death when she wakes up for only a couple of millennials then sleep for millions of years again? That's true. Felix face palmed after realizing he was indeed a moron. Plus, I doubt she can even kill herself. The J, Ramungandra added with a sympathetic tone, 
just like flames can burn for eternity, she will always revive from the ashes no matter which ways she killed herself. So she is a true immortal. Felix's thought process was different than the J. Ramungandra as he was only interested in the fact that she couldn't be killed off like a Snezunijan race. The J. Ramungandra nodded his head calmly, making Felix feel slightly envious of Malak. She was going to use the Phoenix bloodline and there was a high possibility of unlocking an ability related to the revival of eternal rejuvenation. Felix always looked down on common elements, thinking that uncommon elements were much better and more unique. But just now, he realized that was flawed thinking, no, more like subjective human thinking. The phoenix was the fire primogenitor, controlling one of the most common elements in the entire universe. Yet, she was actually unkillable unlike the J, Ramungandra and the Sphinx. The fact that she owned something unique to her than the rest of the primogenitors changed his entire perspective on elements. So what if it was common, uncommon, or rare? What I should be thinking of from now on was the compatibility of the elements I am using instead of their rank. Felix made a firm decision to start ignoring his prejudice against common elements. Idiot. It's good that you have corrected your flawed thinking. While Asin straight away insulted, the J, Ramungandra praised Felix with a faint smile. Then, he asked, do you want to see the wind primogenitor? Yes please. He was a buddy of mine and we have spent a couple millions of years roaming together. Nostalgic, the J, Ramungandra sighed while waving his hand, replacing the phoenix's image with an image of a celestial bird that resembled an eagle. However, he had autumn brown feathers and a smooth scaled head with a yellow sapphire color. His eyes were red and had a black slit in the center, appearing like a black hole with his mind-blowing size. Unlike the other times, the image was moving as the eagle-like bird could be seen flapping his wings once and he was already gone from sight. Before Felix could blink his eyes, the bird returned while grasping a small gas-like planet with his pitch-black claws. This was from one of our hunting sessions for energy during our aimless wandering. We ended up eating that gas planet since we didn't find another alternative. The J, Ramungandra chuckled nostalgically, that caused him to burp and fart throughout the entire journey. Oh, good old days. Good days my ass. You nasty snake. Asna pulled her chair away from the innocent J, Ramungandra who was simply retailing his stories. It wasn't like he was the one who was farting since it was unlikely for him to be affected by gases due to his poison immunity. Meanwhile, Felix's image of the primogenitors was crumbling each time he heard a story from the J, Ramungandra. Lady Sphinx was an oddball who spoke in riddles every ten sentences, Lady Phoenix was a lazy head who missed one of the most important meetings in the history of the universe due to her sleep. Now, he heard this about the wind primogenitor. Felix was quite scared to hear about the rest as none of them seemed normal. What's his name Elder? Felix coughed as he asked. Oh, I am used to calling him Rocky but his real name is the Rock and his worshippers refer to him as the Celestial Rock. Sometimes even as the cosmic predator. The J, Ramungandra responded. Upon seeing how the rock was clasping into a planet that was hundreds of times the size of Earth, Felix believed that title fit him perfectly. So both of them are from the bird species. Felix abruptly frowned his eyebrows after realizing that another issue had just come up. Bird species were 20% more expensive than others due to the possibility of providing wings mutation or ability. Whatever at least they are from a common element and there are plenty of firebirds and wind birds. This was some consolation news since Felix would have a faster time collecting the essence. Thank you for the information Elder. Felix bowed his head and said, I will be on my way to the market. Don't mention it. The J, Ramungandra waved his hand dismissively at Felix and closed his eyes behind his sunglasses, returning to his chilling position. Felix stood up and went to Asna who was lazing under a grey beach umbrella. He looked at her from above with a wicked grin. What do you wa? Thud. Ouch. Are you seeking death, you bastard? Asna immediately raged after getting tapped in the head by Felix's knuckle. Alas, Felix's body had already exploded into mist after the deed was done. 
That's for hiding something from me. Felix criticized, every time I meet you and... You don't mention it, I will tap you in the head. You. Asna wanted to insult him but held back. She merely kept massaging her head in silence. The J, Ramungandra turned around and saw that she was a bit downcast. Little Asna, just tell him. The J, Ramungandra advised gently, he will definitely agree to your plan and won't hate you for mentioning it. Who knows, it might work and you can use the UVR just like him. What do you know? Asna turned to the opposite side while murmuring, I have already screwed up once and he forgave me for it. I won't repeat the same mistake. I saw his memories. The J, Ramungandra chided her, If you haven't noticed, by not telling him, you are repeating the same mistake. Seeing that Asna wasn't responding, the J, Ramungandra shook his head in disapproval and closed his eyes again. He said more than enough already and it was up to Asna to make a decision. Will he really not mind it? Asna covered her eyes with her hands as she sighed to herself. Chapter 375, Filtering the Three Primogenitors' Essence Four days later, in the Earthling team headquarter, inside the drop, Felix had just returned to his room from the cafeteria after eating his breakfast. He got out of the VR pod today since his delivery was expected to arrive in 30 minutes. But since it was delivered by the unreliable Fatty Bodidae, it was delayed by another 30 minutes, making Felix want to beat that worm up for always arriving late. Thankfully, all of his items were delivered without a single issue in them. Instead of taking everything, Felix left the elemental potion materials on Bodidae as he still needed him to deliver it to the Galactical Cargo Company. Felix already made a deal with them to deliver those materials to Madame Hala. After Bodidae left with the materials, Felix sat down on the floor and took out all of the bloodline bottles in his possession. They were plenty. There were two Epic Tier 4 Illusion bloodline bottles, one Epic Tier 6 Sand bloodline bottle, five Epic Tier 5 Fire bloodline bottles, and another five Wind Element bottles. Those ten bottles were purchased four days ago after he exited the consciousness space. Truly, he didn't find difficulty getting them from Mr. Godi's hands. Felix wasn't planning on integrating but just extracting each primogenitor's essence and filtering them in prepared empty bottles. Asna, you can start. Felix requested while starting with one epic tier 4 illusion bottle. After injecting all of its content into his heart, he waited with hands clutched in anticipation for Asna's report. Empty. Sigh. Felix smiled wryly after hearing her negative response. However, he didn't let it affect him as he still had another one. He swiftly returned all the previous bloodline content into the bottle from a small wound in his finger. Naturally, this was the doing of Asna. After doing so, he took a deep breath and injected the content of the second illusion into his heart, and prayed softly for some good results. Um, this one has 1% illusion primogenitor essence but the memories in it are useless. Asna informed lazily, it's just 10 seconds of gazing at space. No problem. Felix exhaled in relief, at least we got 1% as a start. Felix needed to find anything in those two bottles for morals as he knew that this side project would be a long hellish journey until he collects 99% essence needed to finish a replacement stage. It would have been better if he spotted the illusion primogenitor in his earliest memories to know his species, but it is what it is. He couldn't have it all. Felix quickly extracted the bloodline into its original bottle while the 1% illusion essence was placed in another empty bottle, separating the two. He then beamed both in his spatial card and carried on with the five fire bloodline bottles. Although Felix didn't have even 1% fire affinity, it didn't matter since he could not integrate with the bloodlines. With Asna's oppression, those bloodlines couldn't flare up inside Felix's body like everyone else who injected an essence of a wrong element. It took Asna 10 minutes until she finished dealing with them all. It turned out that Malik was quite lucky as Asna had found 29% essence from four bottles while the last one was empty. Felix carried the same sequence with the five wind bottles and this time Asna found only 19% in three bottles and the other two were empty. 
So far so good. Felix smiled in satisfaction while holding into the last epic tier 6 sand bottle. Finally, the last one. Asna yawned while stretching lazily like a cat on her bed. With her furry grey pyjamas that had cat ears on its hoodie, it wasn't a far-fetched analogy. Inject it fast, I want to return to my sleep. Asna said with a rushed tone after seeing that Felix appreciated the content of the bottle. Sleep, sleep, that's the only thing you think about. Vexed, Felix took the needle at once and injected the content into his heart. After emptying the entire bottle, he rubbed his hands in agitation and anticipation. This was the moment of truth. Whether epic tier 6 bloodlines were more worth it than using multiple tier 5 bloodlines. If the amount was above 10%, Felix would fully focus on hunting epic tier 6 sand bloodlines until he reaches 99%. If not, he would buy epic tier 5 bottles from other shops than Mr. Godi whose stock was still empty after a month now. After waiting for a couple of seconds, Asna opened her eyes while raising her eyebrow slightly in surprise. I found 16% in it, but... Thank God! Felix exclaimed loudly in excitement and delight, interrupting Asna mid-sentence. He was hoping for just 10% after getting traumatized by epic tier 5 sand bottles that rarely give beyond 5% due to the Sphinx being a chimera species. Upon seeing that he calmed down again, Asna carried on from where she left with an annoyed tone, yet, that wasn't the biggest finding but her memories. Oh? You saw something useful? Felix inquired. Yes, I saw the reason why she was being referred to as the guardian of knowledge and truth. Asna said. Felix's eyes widened in delight as he understood that it would be vital information if he ever met with Lady Sphinx during her awakening at 99% integration. So far, Asna hasn't told him yet what she saw in all the memories collected but she also said that it wasn't much information like he found in the J. Ramungandra's memories. Wanna know? She asked playfully. No. Although Felix was curious all right, he still reined it since he believed it was much better to watch the entire memories linearly. Tisk, it's your loss. Asna covered herself with the bedsheets and closed her eyes after. Alas. Felix wasn't done with her yet. You better not sleep yet. Felix beamed a black box in front of him and opened it up swiftly. He grinned widely after witnessing hundreds of rainbow stones stacked next to each other. They were constantly switching colors, making him slightly dizzy by the sight as his eyes were sensitive to light than the rest. He turned his head to the side and placed his hand inside the box, touching a dozen of stones at once. Without needing to be told, Asna started absorbing them and purifying them later on. This process lasted for half an hour until 1k high-grade illusion stones were purified properly. This left Felix with multiple boxes filled with black dust lying next to him randomly. Felix beamed them back in the bracelet and stopped bringing out any new boxes. 1k stones were more than enough to last him for 5 daily enhancements or so. Asna didn't waste time as she started enhancing his illusion affinity which was stuck in 12% for a very long time if his previous life was taken into account. Oh, I missed this feeling. Felix just laid on the ground in utter euphoria, feeling like he was lying on a peaceful lake in the hot summer. Alas, it didn't last for even a couple of minutes as Felix's body was still not good enough to handle larger doses of enhancements. Still, after he requested the queen to scan him, he found out that his illusion affinity rating was increased by 4% at once. This meant it wouldn't take him even 22 days until he reached 100%. Though, as long as he didn't manage to collect enough illusion primogenitor essence, it wouldn't matter much if he reached 100% now or years later. Speaking about illusion, Felix swiftly contacted the Beethoven auction house and informed them of his intentions to auction the epic tier 6 sand bloodline bottle and those two illusion bottles. Due to him being considered a VIP guest, the auction accepted the deal after informing him that he would be required to pay 1% fees for each item sold on their platform. Felix agreed and signed the contract with them. Then he sent them the serial codes and told them that he would be responsible for the delivery process. 
he preferred sending them with Badadai to stay on the safe side. After dealing with those bottles, Felix called Luby and informed him of the incoming ten fire slash wind bottles. He gladly accepted them but he told him that he would be paying the full amount on two days interval. Felix hung up after voicing his agreement to the proposal. I should be expecting five billion return if I was unlucky and lost too much on the auction three bottles. Felix thought after doing a quick calculation. Currently, he had only nine billion SC left in his bank account, placing him back to where he belongs. He was worried that his three bottles would be butchered in the monthly auction if they were contested heavily on. But if the opposite happened, he could potentially sell them at a profit. He was already profiting from them by extracting the primogenitor's essence. Let's head to the show. Ring ring. Just as Felix stood up, planning to get himself cleaned up, he noticed that the Maganda chief was calling him. Hee hee, I guess they are getting impatient after not updating them. Felix grinned deviously while accepting the call. 